You're getting very comfortable on this show, aren't you, Darren? <laughs> hey, it's Cinco de Mayo. Hey, hello, Red Band. How you doing? Good. How are you, buddy? It's good to be back. Uh, we got uh, Earl Sankel in the house. Skakel. Skakel in the house. I'm very excited. Uh, we've got, it's a real special day for a lot of different reasons, uh, mainly that you're here. And uh, Darren caught us here. He's sitting Thank in. You, he was sir. good enough Thank to you. sit in. He's uh, negative for the coronavirus, as is. Uh, 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 Skakel, uh, Skakel, uh, Earl, and of course, Red Band gets tested every 24 hours, so he know you know he's healthy, and uh, I'm healthy. We weren't here last week. I thought I had the coronavirus. It was a bad piece of tilapia, and uh, so that was okay. You know, the tilapia is a great tasting fish, but it eats poo. It, it's like uh, shrimp. They eat poo from other uh, fish, so. Uh, I tasted my poo once, and it, it was horrible. I don't know how why it tastes so good when other fish eat uh, other things. Uh, anyway, it's a special day. Uh, you like tilapia. <laughs> tilapia is very good. Uh, so, um, Earl, say hello. Say hello. There's a lot of people that are so excited. I'm not the only one. Say hello, Earl. Well, I keep it real on podcasts. You know, that's my problem. So, people like the honesty, though. So, let's get to it. And are those, are those glasses... <laughs> uh, do you have to wear those glasses? I, I, I do. Oh, uh, so you're one of those people that always wear glasses. These are uh, three-layered prescription glasses. Wow. So, so you're virtually... In the, left, uh, in the left eye, I have astigmatism that is uh, very severe, to say the least. And surgery is out of the question, is it? That's how bad it is. Uh, so have, you got, have, you gotten a, have you seen an optical doctor? Yeah, an optometrist. Yeah, I've seen one of those. <laughs> and they said surgery is out of the question? Because I'm very suspicious of people who wear glasses all the time. I wear glasses, but just to read. <laughs> but you wear them virtually. You have them on your bed post at night. I so do. when you wake up, you put them right on. It's part of my look. It's like Buddy Holly meets Elvis Costello meets uh, Rivers Cuomo from Weezer. Uh, you know, so it's, I, I don't mind them. No, I like them. I mean it. You've got to believe me. Uh You've got to believe me. I believe you. <laughs> wow. wow. So uh, today's a special day. Uh, I lost my mom 22 years ago today on Cico, Cico de Mayo. Today's Cico de Mayo. Uh, so uh, uh, a shout out to all the mothers for Mother's Day on Sunday, whether they're with us or not with us. Uh, May 5th, uh, she was 79 years old, 22 years ago, Cico de Mayo. Wow. How, how did she pass? Uh... It was a ballooning accident up in the Catskills. But, uh... uh, uh Hello! <laughs> Who books that? Man? She was a great mother, though. You know, she really was. She was a great mom. You know, Everett moms are just great. They'll I, let you get away with anything. I saw her once at the comedy store when you gave her a right. tour with Mitzi. It was beautiful. So today is Cinco de Mayo. That's why I'm wearing my poncho. This is a traditional poncho, uh for uh, Cinco de Mayo. This is what would probably be won during the, uh, the big uh, uh, war they had with the French. They beat the French in, I think it was uh, 1862. Uh, they beat the French, so I thought it would be just a good idea to hand out burritos. Uh, these are chili, <laughs> chili bean burritos. <laughs> what the? Uh, warmed up or heated up. And, uh, I'm, I'm good. Uh, Oh, from 7-Eleven, they, they know their burritos. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, these, thank you, man. These are uh, Red Hot Beef and Bean Burrito. That's awesome. Made with beef, pinto beans, and um, a word I can't pronounce, and peppers. So that's great. Thank so you. So I hope you can, uh, maybe someone you know can eat that. Maybe bring it home, maybe. I think I'd rather get Corona than this. <laughs> <laughs> I might be able to, it might be easy to get away with, huh? All right. Well, uh, think about it. I'll leave them on the table. No, I've, I've thought about it. <laughs> I've thought about it. Is that how you stay in shape? You pass up the burritos? Yeah, I don't eat shit like that, man. So uh, our hats are off to all the, uh, uh, all the, the Mexican-Americans and the Mexican people. I mean, uh, I, I love the Mexican people. They're the, the most hard-working people in the world. They do everything, and uh, I don't, still don't understand why you would want to keep them from coming into the country. Uh, I mean... You see them at Home Depot. They know what to get. They're online in a second. They know what they want. They know what wood they need. They're in and out in a second. White people like us are like deer in a headlight in, in the aisle looking for the guy with the orange vest. Can you, can you help me? I'm looking for a nail. <laughs> 
I mean, they cut the hair, they cook the food, the delicatessen, the sandwiches, the, the, the lawn work. I mean, and it's also uh, May 5th is the day that they invented the leaf blower. So everybody's excited about that. So uh, they won a war and invented a machine to clean leaves uh, uh, quickly. Uh, you, uh, so let me just tell you, Earl, the, the rules here at this podcast, there are no rules. You can leave whenever you want. We do a little bit items of interest. You can chime in whenever you want on these items of interest. If, if you feel, did you shower before yeah, you shower. came here? Good. Yeah. A lot of guests. Well, I know who some of your last guests have been. <laughs> Darren, why you, we, go ahead. You asked yeah, me to I do. Shower. He asked me to do an episode with like six comics, and I'm like, dude, it's like <laughs> social distancing. You think I want to be in a room with Carter, you, Red Band, John DeResta, sweating like he has malaria? <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous, just the four of us, and I know we're clean. Right? No, you're passing out fucking burritos. <laughs> and you know what? I was into it, and then I. It's kind of like room temperature. That's what's weird. Yeah, about I know. That. It's, it's supposed to be frozen. I know. <laughs> I was gonna do a popsicle. <laughs> joke but it's like room yeah. temperature well, I use it. like, what 7-Eleven did you find those in? I use yeah. this as a kind of a cushion on my truck <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any frozen burrito should be that warm that yeah, hasn't exactly. been in the microwave I know dude alright guys just, I was almost going to do it too <laughs> it's, it's a burrito it's like complaining about Denny's give it a break it's a burrito <laughs> So, uh, are you noticing people are driving real fast, Red Band? Oh, yeah. Yes, out of control. I did. I'm going 70. That's the most I'll go is 70. It's a 91 pickup. I'm not going to go more than 70. That's it. Isn't 70 is pretty fast. You want to go more than... That t- uh, your vehicle can really take off, yeah. huh? Yeah. <sighs> 70. Man, is enough. And I'm noticing a slight bit more of traffic. Is it my imagination or is there more traffic? Well, Today, there was. A little bit. I'm starting to see a little well, bit more. Well, we're opening up. We're, yeah. we're, 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 it's 90, 90, think, I think it was 93 degrees today in Burbank. Yeah. yeah. It's no, the hottest day today. It's 90% good. of all Starbucks opened up today, too. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, Friday's the big day. I think that's when they, it's like phase one is going to start Friday. Oh, one. What do you mean by big day? What do you mean by big? Well, it's you know. like the first day that they're going to open up some non-essential businesses and you know, I think you'll see a uh, big, you know, population. It, it's it's like the first, you know, big, big test of yeah. Let's see how reopening goes. society. Yeah. Like a like a phase one. Phase one. Like big, maybe like like, like so. I think some clothing stores, but not malls. Right. Like certain know? restaurants, you know, yeah, like sporting people. goods stores, yeah. restaurants. You know what you do cleaners. now. You know what you do now. Round it off. When you go to the merchants now, when they all open up, they should be happy you're doing, giving them business. You know when they say you owe them a penny? Just say, hey, forget it. Round it off. Yeah. You know? I'm not yeah. giving you the penny. Oh, 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 I hate that when they want the penny. Oh, you owe me a penny. Just, just, just you know, CVS is going to get broke because I didn't give you a penny? You know, at these prices? You know, do this. Don't, don't, don't give these merchants a... Uh, 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 you know, all they want is to separate your money from you. You know what I mean? I mean you know? Especially the places that overcharge. Everybody's feeling sorry for yeah. the merchants. Everybody's yeah, yeah. feeling. What about the guy who humps at a at a factory for thirty years on the on on the rivet machine? Bidi, 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 bidi. Thirty fucking years. Bidi, bidi. Nobody gives a hell about him, but the merchants. Oh my God, the merchants, the merchants. Hey, fuck the merchants. <laughs> well, who's working at a riveting factory in twenty twenty? There's a lot of people that have jobs that are not as glad. Glamorous is owning a business. These business owners, you know, everything's about the business owner. The business, the business, the business. They just want your money. They just want your cash. Well, that's why they're a business. I know, but they kind of, they kind of, they, they kind of, uh, you see the commercials, they kind of, they kind of make it like they're your friend, you know, like they're your friend, like the American Express is your friend and Chevron is your friend. They're not your friend. They want your fucking money. I didn't mean to yell at you now. Please. Well, I'm not in business. <laughs> okay. Uh, a shout out today to uh, Carl uh, Kupax. Uh, what's the? Can you pronounce that first? Yeah. That last name, Carl. Where's your glasses? I, you didn't bring your glasses. I would say Carl Kruzik. I don't even see a <laughs> Carl on I love there. His- I don't even see you, a did car. you bring your glasses? Yes, they're in the car. Want me to go get them? I'll, I will no, go get them. It's, it's, I you just should go we... get them, dude. <laughs> no, if he goes, I'll lock in the door. Can He's I not coming that, back in. Let me say that name one more time. Carl, I, don't see, I don't see a Carl on there. Carl Kruzik. Carl Kruzik. Thanks for uh, your Venmo, uh, Venmo uh, uh, contribution. Uh, Patrick a- uh, Andrews from Edmonton, uh, uh, Alberta, Canada. Thank you for your hospitality and your generosity during these hard times. 
Uh, Martinez, A.B. Martinez, thank you. DJ's in the Air Force. He loves Red Band and all the Ys and how you just... uh, Hoo-ha. DJ from up in (laughs) Seattle. Uh, DJ was uh, Air Force, uh, uh, um, you know, he lived in the barracks. DJ. And uh, Hi, DJ. we still uh, Hello, have contact. Thank you for your service, DJ, yeah. you lazy sack of shit. Never did anything for four and a half years. Anyway, uh, Alex. Alex. Uh, what do you mean he was just in the barracks? You know, I know him from the barracks. You know, we, we lived no, in the I barracks. No, I don't know. Well, the, the married guys lived off base or lived on base housing, and the single guys lived in the barracks, you know, in, in the barracks. Oh, what was his job, though? I, it was he's just some gay dude uh, hanging out. No, I think he was his ground support. No, 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 no. no. I bet he was. Uh, moving right along. Uh, uh, Andy, Andy uh, gave me some research on you. It was very hard to get some research on you, I tell you that. Well, right? yeah, if you uh, Google. There wasn't much get, to tell. There's a lot to tell. Well, then the person who does my research is not going to be doing my research anymore. Uh, Andy, Andy, uh, li- uh, L-I-S-L-E. Andy in the corner there, the top corner. Oh, uh, Andy Lysel. Andy Lysel. Thank you for uh, some of the research for Big Al. Say hello to Andy, Al. It's a big uh, Earl. Earl. A big Earl. Say hello. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I call Red Van Ray Van by accident, and he does not like it. He looks at me like, you, you, ignoramus. It's Red Van, not Ray Van. I'm not a pair of sunglasses. Well, how long have you known Red Van for? Oh, quite some time. And how long have we known each other? I knew him when he was, uh, remember when you were at the comedy store and you were filming uh, Joe? Yeah. I think that's when we first yeah. in- got introduced to one another. He, actually, he was the doing first, a documentary. Actually, you know? the first night that I went to the comedy store, me, you, and Joe Rogan and Mitzi went up into her office and talked uh, for like two hours, and I filmed the whole thing. Oh, oh cool. Man. <laughs> Get that out there. Next man. Netflix special. <laughs> Why not? Everyone else has one. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> not, Nothing special about those specials. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Never so, mind. Thanks, Andy Lysel. Lysel, you said? It's Lysel. either Lysel or Lysel. Thanks for some research. Uh, and uh, and Alex, your friend Joe, loves the show. He watches it, uh, listens to it, or watches it dead air sometimes uh, over and over again, more than once. So that's nice to that's hear. That's cool. And uh, Martinez, A.B. Martinez. And uh, and a shout out to all the Mexican-Americans. I really love you, man. I, I love Mexicans. They can do anything. You know, they, they, they're just handy people. They're nice people. They're friendly people. I mean, uh, white people are not doing anything today. Yeah, you know, I got white friends who won't even take the bus. You know what I mean? You know? You yeah, know, but have you, you seen know, they... a bus lately? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like an I don't open... think I'd take a bus. I wouldn't. I'm going to be honest. You got to get where you're going. You get on the bus. What's the Walk. big deal? <laughs> yeah. I'd rather not go. Yeah. Yeah. He's right. Hey, we're all white. You're right. Yeah. So I guess I should start the items of interest. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how I'm reading today. You, you can chime in at, at any time and comment. Uh, we Hopefully you'll stay the whole podcast. Well, two hours. I, I don't know <laughs> if I'm going to stay for two hours, to be oh, honest. You've got to stay till the end. The end is the best part. I have a letter I'm going to read at the end. I mean, uh, maybe do, we'll, we'll shorten it up for you. No, it's, this is your podcast, dude. Don't play What, do you have an appointment in two hours? Uh, no, but... Tattoo removal, perhaps? Maybe a, <laughs> maybe an appointment at the eye doctor? <laughs> I mean, where are you going in two hours? What are you going to do? I'm going to go walk my dog. <laughs> yeah, on the dog. It's time, the dog. it's time for the dog to poo. Don't you get sick of walking the dog when it poos? Not really. <laughs> you like picking up a dog's poo? Better outside than in my house. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get the show on the road. These are, this is the segment that we call Items of Interest. It's a very popular segment with, uh, I'd say, a good portion of the listeners. Uh, there are a lot of people that can't wrap their head around it. They find it uh, intrusive and boring and, uh, <laughs> and uh, utterly useless, you know. But I'm, I'm ready, dude. I mean, okay. <laughs> On March 23rd, 43 employees clocked in at the Baskin Petroleum Plant in the Marcus Hook, Pennsylvania, didn't clock out for the next 28 days. They worked and slept in the factory, pulling alternating 12-hour shifts to meet the soaring demand for polyurethane and key ingredient into protective medical masks and gowns. The men all volunteered for this live-in and by the end of 28 days had produced tens of millions of pounds of the life-saving material. We were just happy to be able to help, said ship supervisor Joe Boyce. So our hats are off to some of my uh, colleagues in the factories. 
You know? It's a great story. Riveting. <laughs> You know, it shows that people are helping out. Not everybody's divided, you know? Not everybody's a bonehead who doesn't want to pull their weight. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. A coffee connoisseur in San Francisco is handing out free cups of high-quality Joe to neighbors and uh, essential workers from his kitchen window. Tech employee Ben Ramains, uh, Ram, uh, he's got the last name of that stalker. Ram, Ram, Ramirez. Ramirez. Richard Ramirez. He used to date women and then kill them. God. What a bad guy. I see his point after my last few relationships. <laughs> <laughs> bad uh, Ramirez had long dreamed of opening up his own cafe, and when coffee shops shuttered for the lockdown, he decided to put his stockpile of beans to good use. He sits at his window from 8 a.m. to noon, and whenever a health care worker or mail carrier passes, he offers them a cup of java, light or medium roast, and made with fresh ground. Oh, there he is. Here's your coffee. <laughs> Here's your coffee. Yeah. You, where's your mask? Where's your mask? You... Hey, leave me alone. He's wearing a glove. He keeps a safe distance from customers by handing coffee or using his son's toy mechanical gorilla arm. It's been nice to bring the community together. He says, uh, what is this one about? Uh, oh, this one's pretty cool. For uh, Christian uh, Tanaka Sat Hansen, 89, and, uh, and Igrim Rossman, 85, love, love, uh, love knows no borders. The German-Danish couple have been unable to visit each other's homes since the border between the two countries was locked down in March. So every day, he drives from her home. You know, she drives from her home in south of Denmark, and he and he 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 bicycles from his north of uh, of his home in Germany to a border checkpoint where they can sit and chat over some snaps. Snaps while never leaving their own countries and always staying safe distance apart. We're here, said Sarpson Hessen, because of love. They should just, like, FaceTime or something. Well, they're old people. They're like, they're like, they're like, some, everybody's not yeah. technically uh, supportive. How do you like the podcast so far, Earl? That's riveting. No, you can jump in at any time. Well, I'm waiting for a story that fits my style. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> he might be waiting a while. Yeah. <laughs> a woman was raped in a hotel room. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I wasn't there, I swear. <laughs> California Highway Police say that while overall traffic levels are down 35% from last year because of stay-at-home order, the number of speeding tickets for the drivers driving faster than 100 miles an hour has increased by 87%. Whoa. With one motorist caught doing 165 miles per hour, Commissioner Warren Stanley Damn. warned that higher speeds can significantly increase the chances of death should it crash your car. That's right. Speed kills. Everybody knows that. But do they really need to do a study on that? <laughs> I know. Uh, police say that overall traffic are down 20 percent That's because of a day at home more. The number of speeding tickets are driving faster and the amount of increased by 25 percent wow. caught them. Your the reading has increased. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't say anything about a study here. <laughs> Well, I mean, I drive a Dodge. No, uh, no, no, I'm looking for the word study. I don't know if it is a study. Maybe it's this uh, Stanley character just giving out at, uh, an announcement. I don't know. Did well, it, I'll read it again. Maybe Did you hear the word study? Uh, I didn't hear any no, words the way you were reading. Uh, a Michigan lawmaker wrote, wore a Confederate flag face mask while voting to repeal the state's lockdown measures. Was it Tommy? G GOP, <laughs> GOP wow. Senator, wow. State Senator Dale Zorn at first claimed that design was merely a pad and used by his mask's sewing wife, then defended the Confederate flag as part of our national history which has uh, failed to, uh, uh, to satisfy African-American. Uh, African -American. Zorn apologized, did not intend to offend anyone. Well, you, you people have to realize you are offending people. If you had a T-shirt that said killing babies was okay, and you wore that around, and people had babies that were killed, it's the same thing with the Confederate flag. It's, it's pro-slavery, isn't it? It's pro... Slavery. It's pro. Uh, it's, it might be anti-black. Okay, that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, anti-black is what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did I get it backwards? Uh, Something like that. Anyway, thinking, yeah. that's what that's what that's what the rub is. You know, that's what the rub is. Sure, it's part of history. Well, it's a but it's not a history that should be celebrated. If uh, I think it depends how old you are. Like last night, I was actually watching. I'm so bored. I watch '80s wrestling videos. I know all about your love for the '80s. But they had a match between Kamala, who was this black wrestler, against the Freebirds, and the Freebirds wore the Confederate flag makeup on their face, like 
how racist was that match? Like, but it was the eighties, so it was like accepted. Right, yeah. right. I, uh, my brother Bruce and I used to watch the wrestling. Yeah, all the time, and we loved it. We loved it when the the announcer yeah. thought he was going to get <laughs> beat up. Right. He was, what's the word? He was... Scared. T- towering? Towering? <laughs> cowering. Cowering? Cowering as he interviewed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if you look at how blacks were portrayed in wrestling in the 80s, you know, back then it was like, oh, yeah, the junkyard dog. Let's have him walk to the ring and bark like a dog. Like, but now you see that's racist. But, right. you know, it's in the 80s. It was like, oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> or like the Dukes of Hazard. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the Just a good old boy. It was on the hood of the car right there. Oh. <sighs> 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 It's just a different era, you know. It depends yeah. on your humor. But yeah, but you see a guy wearing a mask like that. Like, yeah, like, in twenty twenty doesn't look good. You know? And in some uh, matches, the blonde guy with the mullet would have the Confederate flag on his face. <laughs> <laughs> and there's uh, the missing link, who was uh, wow. in parts unknown. I like the Undertaker. He was something else. He He's was still wrestling. He wasn't. He didn't kid around. Uh, poor, we lost Andre the Giant. I think he had a heart attack. Did you see the documentary on him? No. It's one of what, the what channel things. was that? It's like HBO. Yeah, I don't get that. You know, uh, Andre the Giant was so big. You know, he was popular in Japan, and I know this isn't a wrestling podcast. But no, tell no, us. no, no, no. We want to hear it. We want to hear it because we want to hear what you have to say. He was like seven five, five hundred pounds, legit. So he would fly over to Japan, and when he would have to go doo-doo on the plane, Whoa. obviously he couldn't fit in the uh, <laughs> toilet. They would have everyone leave the coach area, and he would shit in a bucket. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, shit. That's hilarious. Wow. Like, can you imagine the rest of that flight? I'd be calling the airline, and I would be getting a refund for that whole trip. <laughs> I would be writing a letter saying, I have never seen someone take a shit right in the airplane like that. It's, I want my money back. It's probably exciting at first to know, hey, I'm on the same airplane as Andre the Giant. Until he starts pooing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, can you imagine? <laughs> They're like three hours into the flight. And I bet there were some people that wanted spoon fills, you know, fans. Oh, yeah. you the know. Palmers. Yeah. Oh, I love you, Mr. Oh, I love Giant. you. Can I have a little bit of your poo in a bag? I want to take it home and give it to my kids. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to petrify it and put it in a solution and keep it. <laughs> it smells great. Great set, Mr. Giant. Uh, with news that incidents of STDs in New York City has plunged 80% since the start of the pandemic. That's what social distancing will do, said uh, so-and-so-and-so-and-so of so-and-so-and-so-and-so. It's been awful for uh, gangbang shoots. Yeah. Six feet distance. I mean, no one's that big. Not great. Now I'm doing bits. (laughs) (laughs) No, no. It's probably very funny, but sometimes... Things go over my head. It's okay. No, you know when you said gangbang, I was thinking of gangbangers. <laughs> you know, you know what yeah. I mean. Don't, don't, you know. I'm just saying. Yeah, a gangbang would be hard to do at six feet distance. Not even Lexington Steel is that big. No, no, you'd have to uh, wrap them in plastic or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the launch of the uh, this is a clean podcast. The Tubi virtual <laughs> pub set up the owning. I don't want to read that one. After after Belgians were asked to eat fresh f- French fries twice a week to help shrink, 750,000 tons of uh, extra potatoes caused by the pandemic's impact on food exports. If Belgium's complies, if Belgium's complies, said agricultural minister Hyde Claire Kivist, we can avoid seeing uh, excellent food for which our farmers have worked so hard. God, look at all those fucking potatoes. They need to drop those off in some of the poorer countries in Africa. And uh... There's a lot of weird stuff going on in the world, huh? They want us to stay inside. They want them to, like, eat potatoes. It's like, you're doing your part. A lot of weird stuff happening. No, did you hear about Wendy's today? Uh-oh, tell us. <laughs> tell oh, me about breaking news. Yeah. You love your breaking, Wendy's. Yeah, yeah, this is... A, yeah. Do the breaking news. Wendy's uh, have... Do, 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 Wendy's has, have pulled burgers out of a lot of their stores today. No more burgers, hamburgers. Why? Because they can't get meat from their, their factories closed because of the coronavirus. So right now, like, there's a lot of Wendy's. When you go to try to order a burger, they're like, uh, we only have chicken. That's a good thing. So people are going, to, obviously, where's the beef, you know? Clearly. Wow. <laughs> uh, after, after a contractor performing a deep clean of a library in Newmarket, United Kingdom, put the books back on the shelves in order of size, largest to smallest. It looks like libraries 
We'll be closed for a while, so we'll have plenty of time to sort the books out, said Liberian official James Powell. That's not a very interesting item of interest. I don't know why I read <laughs> yeah, that one. That's the, the books are going to go from smalls to low. That's interesting. I, I thought it was who a cares? They're, 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 they're contractors. They don't, they're, going to, they're going to take the time to put all the, the science books back on the science area and the children's book in the children's book area and the travel books in the travel book area and the, uh, the history books in the, uh, the history book area and the, uh, the autobiography books in the uh, autobiography area. Let me ask you a question. You're a smart guy. Was it hard to find books in the library you for you? You never tell by listening. What? Yeah. Was it hard for you to find books in the library, like with the whole Dewey Decimal System? I, I could never do it. I remember easy. they used to have a uh, the, uh, the, the little card. The little yeah, that Dewey Decimal, Decimal system. system. You didn't know how to use the Dewey Decimal System? No, they, really? they, they, that's not what guess. they called it. They called it the, the Interdex or something. With the roller, uh, index. Uh, index. The Index, index card. card. Index <laughs> Who taught you English, Shaq? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but have you seen the meat at Wendy's? It looks disgusting. Hey, like, it's square. Do you, do you eat Wendy's? I fucking love Wendy's. Uh, Wendy's. Well, there you go. I, <laughs> had a, I have a friend uh, who's in a nursing home, and I brought him a Wendy's, and he just, he just, he, I, I said, you're going to eat that? He's already done. It was already done. <laughs> was it Ralphie May? <laughs> <laughs> 594 pounds at the time of his death. Uh, this is a story we talked about. Really? We, we sto- 594. How'd you like to be that cremator? <laughs> hey, uh, wow. <laughs> I'm done for the week. They're going to have to do them in pieces. Oh, my God. Ooh. Dude, at his memorial, there was four boxes. Four boxes of ashes. <laughs> no. No, I think there were. I think it was. I, I think was there. Right. I love really? Ralphie. Ralphie was the Jeez, best. If I was the like. next of kin, I said, okay, you're going to charge me for four boxes? Why don't you just, just make a bigger box? You know? It's impossible. I'd write a letter to the funeral home and try to get a refund. Or a oh, no, I or like that because then everyone could have a box for themselves. Yeah. Like, you can have a box, you can have a box. Yeah, I mean. I, I, I held a box once at a friend who passed away. Hope it wasn't and Ralphie's. They, and it was heavy. It was heavy, the box. Well, yeah, yeah. it's 594 pounds of ashes. I mean, that's a lot of... <laughs> well, I'm saying, like... I, I just went to U-Haul. Wow, it's a pretty heavy weight. Imagine the uh, coffin, if he wouldn't have been cremated. Like, he would have needed body They're special. Yeah, they, they would have maybe... It would, yeah, wow. It had to be a bringer funeral. <laughs> yeah. I, I, sorry, I love Ralphie. <laughs> I love Ralphie so much, I would have jumped into the coffin with him if there was room. He was good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, was, he was good. He was, he was an excellent comedian. He, he wanted to go fishing with me. I'm like, you've got to be kidding, bro. There's two boats. <laughs> Trust me on that one. I love Ralphie. <laughs> Uh, the Navy's top... Ad- this is a story we talked about, I think, in a, a previous episode. The Navy's top admiral recommended last week that Captain Brett Coza uh, be restored to the command of the USSS Theodore Roosevelt. Coza was uh, removed by Navy Secretary Thomas Moley after he raised alarms about a COVID-19 outbreak aboard the aircraft carrier. Wait, COVID-19? What disease is that? Moley reportedly acted under the <laughs> assumption that President Trump wanted him fired before publicizing the threat of the ship's 4,800 sailors. Molly resigned after the personal attacks he made on the crows. And the big car- hey, this is so. Hopefully, he'll get his job back. But there's a lot of sailors getting. Uh, but they want to keep it hush hush. You know, it's uh, they don't want to let you know the truth because uh, you got to be ready in case of a war. They don't want the enemy to know that we've got a lot of sick uh, shipmates. So uh, it's a, just a dicey situation. You know, somebody's right, somebody's wrong, somebody's always going to be right or wrong. Who knows? Well, I would send six soldiers over there. Get the other people sick. You could do that. Pack in a little overnight bag. Give him some costumes. Oh, man. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> is that Jeff Scott? What's he doing? Is that guy gay? You think he's Just frozen? a little. <laughs> but, but, you know, the Village People, their uh, video for their song, In the Navy. In the Navy. Was used as a recruiting uh, video oh. until, like, the head of the Navy saw the video. And he's like, oh, these guys are gay? And then they... <laughs> Then they, 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 they nixed it. You know? Well, only one of them was gay in real life. <laughs> which one? Guess which one? Well, I'll guess the guy who died of AIDS. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> Which one was the one that died of AIDS? The, I, I know his name, actually. The candlestick maker, I think. No, was. The Gl- Glenn Hughes. He was the leather guy. They... Oh, 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 we should have known the leather guy. Yeah. Come on. They love leather. Gay people just can't get enough of leather. You, you can What's clean it? cum off of it easier. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Ooh. Oh, you, you can take it to the store, and the, the, the cleaners? The dry cleaners. Oh, they, they make a fortune in West Hollywood. And they can remove semen pretty easy? Yeah, yeah, it just slides right off. 
Wow. <laughs> but how, how would you... Interesting. Like, Interesting. How would you like to be the other five guys in the village, people? Like, oh, or, yeah. or the guy in the, in the dry cleaner who's right. got to always... I'd love to be the dry cleaner. You know how much money that, that guy makes? When they come like, back off tour, you mean? Yeah, that's yeah. a racket. That's a yeah. racket. You know how much... You're, you're right. But look at this video. Like, you know, you imagine being the head of the Navy going, oh, wait a minute. I think uh, these guys might be gay. And this is when... <laughs> but this is when the military was very anti-gay. Right. So, you know, they just heard, saw the song or heard the song in the Navy and go, oh, yeah, this would be a good recruiting video. <laughs> Look at that guy in the mustache. He was straight. Yeah. How'd hey, you like to be his acting coach? Jeez. Did you ever hear that thing about a, a thousand sailors go to sea and then 500 couples come back? You ever heard that? Sounds that, like a lyric to in the Navy. I, 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 I may, I, I, I may have, but I, I don't Navy. want to misquote. Okay. Quote, you know. So that's the story about him. Maybe he'll get his job back, and maybe they'll uh, we'll get a vaccine and get rid of this. Uh... Here's the story, though, why we have the In the Navy video. You know that uh, haunting picture, the first guy who jumped off Tower uh, 1 on 9-11? Yeah. Was the singer's brother. Whoa. Wow. It's the first guy to, you know, Rest in that peace. one picture of him, you know. The, oh, my gosh. It was his wow. brother. Really? That's how bad the village people were. He couldn't take his brother's music. <laughs> he said, this is my opportunity. This is it. Wow. Yeah, that. I don't know if it's that guy. Oh, oh my, my gosh. God. Isn't that crazy? Oh, that's wow. him. That's the brother of the guy from Village People? I don't know if that's the one, but like uh, that's so sad. someone put, yeah, it's horrible. Imagine that. Well, you, I, I can't imagine it because if you ever had a match Fudge. and you let that match burn down like if you're lighting something oh. and you go nuts. You go nuts when that match gets close to your fingers. You literally go nuts. Imagine a full-on flame. And this is what causes people to jump out of buildings. Or a bringer show of flappers. I, I, <laughs> oh, I pass flappers when I come here. Yeah, I bet. And they want to let everybody know they're still open. Yeah, vir- virtual, uh, <laughs> virtual shows. Oh, wow. Five dollars to get on your virtual show. You have to audition first. Virtu- How do you do a virtual audition at a comedy club? <laughs> so stupid. What a great group over there. Oh God. A lot of the stories uh, in the U.S. this week are about politics and certain things. And uh, Red Band and I have discussed this, and we we don't want to talk about politics. And uh, we got an election coming up. Everybody dude. knows what's going on, and everybody's got an opinion. And I just don't want to go there. Everybody's going to have to make their own decision on what they think is what they think. Well, I voted for Obama, at least half of them. <laughs> Here's, uh, right what now. a salad now. <laughs> Here's a good one out of the UK. Scientists at Oxford University have taken an early lead in the race to find a vaccine for COVID-19, while most research teams have to start with small clinical trials to prove safety. Oxford, Oxford's Jennifer Jennifer Jenner Institute showed in previous trials that similar shots, including one against a different coronavirus, are harmless to humans. That means Oxford can jump to a trial involving 6,000 human participants. This is great news. Did you know about this, Darren? No. Did you give a shit about this, Darren? No, it's interesting. <laughs> How about just wash your fucking hands every now and then? I don't know. I, I've always washed my hands. I don't know what this is. You have to tell people to wash their hands? I've always washed my hands. But look at the comics we know. Like, yeah, you do have to tell that group. <laughs> yeah. That's why you always turn that doorknob or push that door open in the restroom with a paper towel. They're starting to realize now. Put the basket, the, the paper towel basket next to the door. Yes, yes. So you can do that and drop it in. Sometimes they move it so far away, then people throw it, and it's like eventually they. And get they're the idea finally dropping it. the paper towel dispenser lower, so that when yeah. you just the sister, the water doesn't run down your freaking sleeves. Yeah, you know it's 2020, and these idiots didn't they ever use the the equipment that they're installing? And what about the faucets? You have to use one hand, and you can, and it turns off. You got. Oh, I don't yeah. like the sensor too. The sensor never works. Mm-hmm. Just use the one with the spring. You hit it, and then the yes. spring leaves, and then it shuts off. The sensor's. The sensor is or bullshit. the spring's not adjusted right, and you, it just it keeps going off. You want it to like run water for twenty seconds at least, right? Yeah. Yes. 
I'm not yes. going down on girls at massage parlors anymore. Right? No, you can't. You can't take that chance. How are you going to look with that big yeah. saw hanging out the side of your face? Well, two of the three in my neighborhood shut down. That's a tough time for those places. <laughs> oh, my God. I guess they're all doing them on call now in the house, in, the, in your private residence. No, the one is still open. Oh, I don't go, is? but like, you know. Right. And they yelled at me the other night for parking in their lot. I'm like... After the You're... podcast, maybe you can give me that address. Yeah, yeah, it's the one Jeff Richards told me about. Yes. <laughs> so this is good news. <laughs> this is a good news. They're going to get a vaccination soon. We, uh, uh, El Salvador is having a big problem. Um, after, after recording 60 gang-related killings in one weekend. This is why a lot of Americans don't realize all these immigrants are coming here. They're running for their life. They're, running, they're literally running for their life. These the South American countries are not the safest place. El Salvador this week cracked down on the gang members and says uh, ordered the violence uh, from behind bars. They ordered these killings from behind bars. Uh, I know you're a prison activi- uh, activist. I know you've been very, very uh, vocal about uh, prisoner uh, uh, treatments. We, well, yeah, not really. I mean, <laughs> you know, if you did something wrong, I hope you take it in the butt for a long time. Well, that, that's what I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like if you were gay and, you know, in the 70s and you were closeted, prison was probably like going to Disneyland. (laughs) (laughs) I'd be jaywalking all over the place. Yeah. I I just did an armed robbery. Put me in there for five years and just take it it up the mud hut hard. I mean, now with AIDS and stuff, you got to be a little more careful. Right. You'd be signing on for more time. Yeah, yeah. I'll take 10 years. <laughs> uh, the government released photos of hundreds of prisoners wearing only underwear and jammed together as guards searched their cells. Metal sheets were so... Uh, 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 but look at the guy in the front. Look how happy he looks. He's got six guys behind him. I mean, oh. the guy's like, this is great. Man, that's a dangerous place Who wants to, to be? live in an adobe hut when I could take it in the banger here? Jeez. One's got lipstick on, it looks like. That ain't lipstick. That's blood. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, it's... Uh, it's Dude, a- I wouldn't want to fight any one of those guys. Uh, well, you have to defend yourself, Darren. Yeah, you, but you know, we, what if you're you going to lose, you've got to defend yourself. But at sure. some point in prison, you just, it's not gay. It's just, this is just how it is. Of course, you know. you you have to uh, you have to uh, you have to do that. I mean, when you don't have a choice, <laughs> well, yeah. If you're in there for ten <laughs> years, like at some point, you got to be like, yep. Oh. Unless you're a high-profile prisoner, like the Menendez brothers, they'll never see each other again. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, Tokyo. This is a story out of Tokyo. Everybody loves uh, J- Japanese uh, people. Uh, Tokyo startup that runs an Air, 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 Airbnb. Is he all right there? <laughs> <laughs> what they're doing is they're renting out hotel rooms to people who just want to get away for the day for $45. They'll Not charge bad. so you can get away from your wife and your family. And, and, and you just stay in the hotel and you do all your school, uh, your, your, your work from home in this hotel. That's what that's in a nutshell. I'm kind of going through these kind of quick because I really want to talk to you more about We could go to me and then, and then we could go back to these. Like, we don't have to I had back. a friend who told me that. He says, Holtzman, you got to just be more relaxed. When they want to talk about something else, let them talk about something else. Don't say, oh, we got to do items of interest. We got to do it. So I understand what you're saying. Well, yeah, but it's your Is podcast. Some, no, it's nobody's. Well, it's, it's nobody's. <laughs> it's not mine. <laughs> so if, it was, if it was mine, I would have left 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Oh, you don't like this format? No, no, I'm just kidding. It's not hot enough in here. Can we turn the heater on? Well, I'm Jeez. the one in the poncho. What are you kidding? I'm in the sauna around you here. You also have a like a heat suit on too underneath. The let me let me turn on the air and see no, if it's just, too I'm loud. Just kidding, dude. I'm it just might not kidding. be too bad. I'm, I'm just kidding, dude. It's not that hot. No, let it go. Let, 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 uh, we don't want to interfere with the sound. We'll have people complaining about the sound. All right. I was uh, just kidding. I was just kidding. Ki- ki- uh, Kim Jo Jong is alive. Kim Kong. Supposedly. Kim Jong Un. Kim Congdon. I love uh, her. The North She's Korean leader is alive. They saw him uh, cutting a ribbon the other day, and uh, everybody's excited about that. He's there's some uh, conspiracy against that though. Like I guess they they're saying that he's a body double. Like, oh, like if you look at his teeth or something like wow, that. Wow, that could be. Yeah. Well, all or the people, all the people who are s- uh, spreading all the rumors and, s- mm. and and stirring the pot are oh wow uh, people that used to live in North Korea who now live in South Korea. And it's just like the Epic Times. You know that newspaper, the Epic Times or the Epic... Yeah, Epoch Times. Yeah, that, all that does, if you read it, 
it, it just says bad stuff about China. So you have to be careful what you read. Everybody has an agenda. Nobody's just playing it straight. I hate that. You know, just I want to know what happened, and I'll decide what happened and what happened. But everybody wants to tell you what happened and how you should think. Yeah. So be careful. He looks good to me. He's, I wanna, I wanna, but I like when you showed the side by side with the teeth, though. That's a good point. Well, supposedly they they don't know if it's it's photoshopped or everybody's got an agenda everybody wants you to think the way they want to think i want to think the way i want to think even if it's wrong right earl well i don't watch the news anymore it's just like turn me loose lover boy. turn me loose i got to do, do it my way, way. Well, he did it his way oh, no way it... 1980s i was in okinawa I you're you a big were. fan of the 80s yeah yeah man. we're gonna go over the 80s i love the 80s and he knows the 80s. I know the I 80s. was in Okinawa in the 80s. I bet you were. Hey. <laughs> oh, man. I told this story. I was there. Remember when they used to have laser discs? I bought I one still have for $1,200. And they used to you put did. the laser disc on, and then you'd see the band on the laser disc yeah. with the music. Yeah. The, the technology lasted about five minutes, right? Yeah. It didn't last long. Anyway, this is funny. I was in the bar watching the uh, Queen you know, I don't know anything about anything. And I'm, the music is great. Everybody loves Queen. And here's this guy with the cut down, with the tight one-piece suit, with all his chest hair hanging out. And I'm scratching my head. I had no idea the guy was a homo. Who, <laughs> who did? Everybody probably Nobody did. did. Even dressed like that? But then, once again, it was the 80s. Like, now it's like, oh, that's Oh, so it wasn't... It, it wasn't out of the ordinary that I didn't know. No, like when you watch the Hollywood Square. Oh, I thought I was the only one that didn't know he was a flamer. No, there's a lot of those. Like, look at George Michael. Yeah. I used to have thought George oh, Michael yeah. was the coolest yeah, guy yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, like, look yeah. at Paul Lynn from the Hollywood Square. It's like, who knew he was gay? And you know who? Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious though. Like, oh, I'm on the laser too. Oh God, there's like. In my you, ass. you know who just came out of the closet? Uh, Elton John. I heard just he came, came out of the warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> but even back then, you like you watch his video for "I'm Still Standing," which is all dudes and speedos. At the time, you're like, "Oh, this guy just likes I don't know guys and speedos." <laughs> Yeah, it's a different about, era. What about that guy from the Old Town Road? Because he came out right after his first song. Yeah, Little Nas. A black cowboy who's gay. Boy, that hits all the check marks. <laughs> so what happened to LaserDisc? The people weren't buying the LaserDisc, I CD guess. CD came out. Oh. The problem with the LaserDisc is actually it was... Uh, I, am, I, am, I bought one and like literally it went out of business like the month after I bought one. So I, I have yeah. a brand new laser disc at my mom's house. But uh, the problem with laser discs is you still had to flip them though, you yeah. know? And it was so annoying. But it was better quality than a DVD. But when DVD came out, you didn't have to flip it and people were like, fuck it, this is good enough. Dude, there was a movie uh, in 1980 called The Idol Maker. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. And it was only out on laser disc. So I went to uh, the good guys on Wilshire and bought a, like a thirteen hundred dollar laser disc player wow. just to watch that movie. That's how much money. And I, I heard have. your your most favorite movie oh. in the whole wide world, nineteen eighty seven. Can you tell us what that movie is? Predator. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna talk about it. Not the We're... Harvey Weinstein story. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. They, ain't, they ain't all lying. I'm sorry. I forgot to give you a proper introduction. You know, you, you, you do voiceover. You're an actor, a comedian. You won the roast battle up in Canada. I did not, but I did very well on oh, it. Much to Comedy Central's chagrin. Uh, we'll get into that. Try and but, fuck uh, me over, Viacom. You're, you're multi-talented. Uh, I've known you for quite a number of years. Uh, and uh, we've, we've even gotten closer uh, as we both work in the, uh, the club together. Yeah. And... Uh, and it just just a versatile uh, uh, that uh, nobody knows. And human. Are you all right there? You're right. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> sound like a test pattern. Okay, so uh, so he's back. I want to get that haircut. There I am. I want to I want to get that haircut. That North Korean dictator haircut. I think that is the coolest haircut. You know, just 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 clean around that. You know. Yeah, yeah bowl cut. Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah, bowl cut. But the problem with short hair like that is you got to do it like every two weeks. Otherwise, yeah. it looks out of place and unneat. The shorter you cut your hair, the more you have to cut your hair. 
But some salons literally have a bowl they will put over your head and they just shave around it and then it's like the perfect. How much wow. is that? How much is that? Well, I wouldn't know how much that particular cut. <laughs> yeah, that's I would do it if it was maybe, maybe Chinatown. I can get them to do that for me. Look at that. Is that the coolest? That's not cool. But you don't the, like that? No, that's fucking stupid. And <laughs> it looks good on them, no uh, red well, band. And, and you don't need to go to a barber to do that haircut. You just need to buy clippers. It's so easy to do that because it looks like it's messed up, anyways. This guy has bad skin though. Jesus, because he eats. A lot of greasy shit, but I can tell. Look at the pock marks on his face. Looks like seals. He looks bone. like a pretty handsome dictator to me. I, you know, as far as dictators go. Handsome? About- <laughs> Are you fucking blind? Put a wig well, on him. Kinda, He'll be okay. He's kind of, you know, he's got like, a kind of defiant kind of look. He's got a moon face. He looks Cavalier. Like, <laughs> he looks like Margaret Cho with a thyroid <laughs> condition. <laughs> he looks like the kind of guy you would not want to piss off. Oh, absolutely. You know uh, I mean? Small- this is a good one. This is a one I think everybody's going to enjoy. This uh, item of interest. Uh, this one is uh, Mick Jagger won't let one of the oldest uh, debates in rock music die. Arguing last week that there's obviously no competition between the Rolling Stones and the Beatles. Paul McCartney has reignited the... Uh, rivalry day uh, days mm. earlier telling howard stern i love the stones but i'm with you the beatles were better the 77 year old singer said jagger's band largely based its sound on the blues whereas the beatles had more influences sir paul also called the stones copycats saying they followed the fab four to the u.s and mimicked the beatles psychedelic sound on, ni- on 1967, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Do you think when they do an album cover, the Rolling Stones, the makeup girl looks at Keith Richards and just goes, you're good. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> you're good, uh, uh, Keith. <laughs> you know, there's a black bass player in the Rolling Stones. He's been with them 30 years, but he's not allowed in any of the pictures. Are you serious? Yeah. Never knew that. Bill Wyman left in like the early '80s or mid '80s, and this guy Daryl has been with them since. Wow! And like he's literally not allowed in any pictures, not no album covers. Just... Never in the car. Remember that album they had the car in the convertible? Yeah. Never he just like tours just... with them, or does he? Yeah, he's like they're touring, wow. but like he's on the albums, and like, I just wow. you know he goes to bars and it's like, hey, I'm in the Rolling Stones. Yeah, and the, right. The girls like you're black, you're not in the Rolling Stones. Wow. Yeah. they don't believe him. No, they probably think he's just security on it's stage. Fucked up. He should carry his guitar with him wherever he goes just he to prove make, it. You yeah. know? Probably makes great money, but like yeah, he's like, I can, I can be quiet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can you watch this guitar? I have to go to the bathroom. Don't let anybody touch it. Don't let anybody take when it. When do people realize it when they go to the shows? Hey, there's a black guy up there. Well, yeah, but he's like standing so far wow. to the side of the stage. You think he's like, you know, he's not part pro. of it. Uh, I heard that Ozzy has a guy that stands behind the curtain that kind of like does the singing yeah. a lot. My I buddy heard. did that for one of his tours. Stands behind the curtain and basically lip syncs with him. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Jagger, 76, called McCartney's comment so funny and noted the real big difference between the groups. One band is unbelievably lucky still playing in stadiums, and the other band doesn't exist. Well, wow. two of them are dead. It's hard to do a reunion. So are you sticking up for the Beatles, or are you sticking up for the Stones? In that? Well, I'm just saying... Uh, the only reason the Beatles don't exist is because two of them are dead. Like, it's kind of no. But before they died, they broke up. Oh, that's true. Well, yeah, but you know they make so much money. Like, oh, when royalties. you make that kind of money, do you really want to tour? Uh, <laughs> it seemed like it would be kind of intrusive. Wouldn't you rather just sail around on a boat in the Caribbean? Of course. I mean, they make millions a year still. You know, you want to play Poughkeepsie at the uh, Alamo Dome? <laughs> Who do you like better? Who do you like better, Beatles or Rolling Stones? Question. Yeah, they're both just just dynamite, you know. Rat. Whatever, you know. Rat. What do you feel about this new Beatles song, though? This Ghost Town. It seems like just like a a I knockoff. It's just it seems like just the more uh, Rolling Stones propaganda. You know, you know, like you and I could have came up with that song in five seconds with Red Band and the Wires. You know, it says uh, Ghost Town. It's you know, no one heard the new song. I don't even know what you're talking about. I haven't. I heard the new Killers song about Ghost Town. Uh, I'm not impressed with it. It's a Beatles song. No, it's 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 a new uh, Rolling Stones song. Oh, Rolling Stones. I like the new Killers song. I'm I'm not really down with the Stones. Old Stones is better, you know. 
Yeah, back when Bill Wyman was marrying a fourteen-year-old, like. <laughs> Well, she looked a lot older than she was. Yeah. She 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 could have been a twenty three year old, you know. Oh, you know who I'm talking about? Like she was like I think when they started dating, she was she was pretty young. Yeah, but she was old for her age. You know, she she was she could talk about politics and stuff. Yeah, but you know. Uh, Kayan West is now a billionaire. Forbes reported last Wait, week. Wait, who? Kayan. Did he sell his pepper fortune? Say it, say it for me. Oh, Cayenne, did he sell his pepper for it? <laughs> no, I got that. I, uh, am I pronouncing his first name? Wait, wait, how'd you say it? Uh, yeah, you're pronouncing it, but not correctly. Well, that's what I'm asking Kanye. you. Kanye. All right, Kanye, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kanye West, West. Is, uh, is now a billionaire, Forbes reported last week, but he wasn't satisfied. Maybe he can buy these burritos. I think they're ready to eat. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a billion, West said. It's $3.3 billion, since no one at Forbes knows how to count. Wow, that's ballsy, Ooh. huh? Using documents provided by West 42, Forbes calculated the net worth to be $1.3 billion to draw to, the, to a sneaker label, Yeezy. That's a Yeezy. 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 <laughs> Yeezy. Yeezy's the knockoff. Uh, it's, it's, uh, you, guys are, you guys are wondering why, uh, you're wondering why Red Band even uh, uh, let me have a podcast. <laughs> yeah. This fucking guy can't speak. He can't speak. <laughs> Yeezy, yeah. I, I know that shoe. Uh, West Shoes generated about $1.3 billion in revenue last year. That's a lot of footwear. And he pockets an 11% royalty. He also has $17 million in cash, $35 million in stocks, $90 million in music holdings, and more than $100 million in property and land, plus $100 million in debt. I'd clean up that debt if I had that much money. Why would you have any debt if you got all that yeah. money? It doesn't make any sense. It's probably an accounting thing where the guy needs it. It makes sense to have debt, you know. Yeah. Maybe something yeah, like that. Yeah, some trick you know? like that, right? Yeah. It's loans. It's all the high interest loans he probably takes out. The rapper and fashion mogul said last mm. year that he might change his name to Christian Genius Billionaire <laughs> Kayane West. That's kind of close. And I got one here. You, does anybody want to hear about uh, Reese Witherspoon? Oh, yeah. I got two great. I know you're a big sports fan. Yeah, yeah. And I, I love it. I love guys that really know about sports because they know all the names yeah. they know all the facts they know so much information they can tell you when he was traded when he what he got paid where he lived the coach he had the this coach that coach it's just mind-boggling the information uh there's a guy on uh frazier smith they call him the sports guy uh dave dave smith the sports guy and he knows Everything. When is Frazier Smith coming back on the air? He... <laughs> oh, you got to get Frazier back on, huh? Yeah, man. He, these he... are the jokes. Oh, man. Come on, guys. So anyway, you know everything about hockey, huh? Yeah, yeah. It's the only sport left for white people. <laughs> okay. So, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, do we want to hear about Reese Witherspoon? Yeah. Yes. All right. Why Reese this... Witherspoon thought she was washed up at 36, said so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. Eleven years had passed since Legally Blonde, and seven since she'd won an Oscar for the Walk the Line, and Hollywood offers few starring roles to a woman past their 35th birthday. With few offers coming in, Witherspoon's <coughs> husband, Tim Toth, T-O-T-H, a talent agent, encouraged her to tap into her love of books and create a production company that would turn good stories into films with interesting roles for her and other actresses, I guess, her age. You know, get the, get the hair dye out. I always, I, I always knew uh, within, get those fake eyelashes, get those, uh, those ass pumps, you know, they inject the, their buttocks with uh, solutions to give them that lift up bazillion ass look. You know, bleach that private part, shave your elbows, and, the and uh, we'll, try, we'll, we'll try to keep using you. Yeah, forget about the 22-year-old girl that doesn't need anything, you know, you know but we want to keep using this old junkyard Ford to uh, transport the trash to the, uh, to the dump, you know, because uh, the garbage truck won't pick it up. 22, you know? that's way too old for me. Jeez, uh, don't we know? Uh... uh, uh I always knew from the time I was seven that I wanted to be a storyteller or an actor or a singer, she says. She, uh, she uh, opted uh, two books, Gone Girl and Wild. The former was a huge hit and earned uh, 
uh, I guess, uh, 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 Rosemond Pike. Is that an award? And then 35, an Oscar nomination. The latter, the latter earned Witherspoon another Oscar as well as one. Hey, you, you got to listen, man. I can see you're not listening. <laughs> I can tell when my guests are not listening. It's just about from the time we start the podcast till it's over, uh, they're not listening. <laughs> We're what you call in the last mile. <laughs> Jesus, this story. How like, are we doing on time? We'll be done uh, with these items of interest soon. It's this, only, uh, it's only. We got time. I got to get. The not right. This story is going <laughs> to cure my insomnia. <laughs> yeah, I, I was. I, I got two obituaries that I got to read. They, they have to do with sports guys, a golfer and a pitcher, and they're just amazing, amazing obituaries. This is when I met Grace Witherspoon. Uh, she she had a black eye when I met her. Wow, she was really drunk too. Where did you meet her? Uh, at a wine bar somewhere in like Didn't Silver Lake. Didn't she have Lake. a problem with a cop and drinking and driving up north or something? I, I, I think so. But was no, she got, one? supposedly she got hit by like a softball or something when I met her. But she was really nice, really short, really drunk, wow. really fun girl. Yeah, it's, it's okay. nice when they can lose their inhibitions with alcohol. <laughs> you know, you can dance on their head and they're like happy with that, you know. Uh, uh, 35 and Oscar nomination Little Lies became a big hit series for HBO and a vehicle for all female ensemble cast he offers uh, her efforts have transformed Hollywood I don't know if that's true you can't be uh, rendered obsolete if you just keep being funny Witherspoon says guess what gets rendered obsolete your boobs go south your face goes south your ass goes south but you can always be funny funny doesn't sag well, not Isn't necessarily. that nice? What do you think about that? Isn't that nice? Well, I mean, funny can sag, you know. You got to always work on it. All right, it'll go as droopy as your jokes. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's true. You have to say re- 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 revelant. Yeah, yeah. Revelant. Relevant. Relevant. You know, revelant. A uh, married couple in New York were reunited with a wedding ring they lost uh, three years ago after a Fort Lauderdale restaurant uh, removed his outdoor deck to make way for an in, uh, increased uh, to-go business. <laughs> Ray Covey, the manager of Coconut's uh, Eatery, was clear, uh, cleaning up the uh, debris under the removed deck when he noticed a bit of a sparkle. In the dirt, he put up the ring's engraving. He looked it up, Mike and Lisa, eight twenty one fifteen on Facebook. And it led to a phone call from Lisa in New York. The ring, she said, had slipped off Mike's greasy fingers when they were at Coconuts in 2017 and fallen through the floorboards. What a wonderful story. Yeah, that's awesome. I wonder if he bit his finger off, too, while he was at it. A South Texas uh, uh, emergency room doctor has taken up permanent residence in his ch- uh, children's backyard treehouse as a means of a self-isolation. Dr. Jason Barnes, 39, has now spent, uh, try to stay awake, Earl. Jesus, bro, uh, this is tough. Uh, it's tough on the people in the studio, but the people like to listen to stories, items of interest. Oh, hey, it's your podcast, dude. You keep I- saying that, and I'm, I'm, I refuse to admit that it is. <laughs> uh, and save. I'm just sitting in for somebody else. I'm sitting in for Shaka Bakalaka. Shaq Bakaluka. What's Does, his doesn't he book the J spot in Englewood? <laughs> you ever performed there? Once. That I was went, enough. I was there with Fat James the last time I saw Fat yeah. James. Ah. Dude, I was uh, in his, I saw him the last three days of his life. I visited him in the hospital. Only guy I've ever met that got fatter to get bone cancer. Oh. I mean, leukemia, got, huh? Did he have, was it leukemia? What, what? Dude, he he liked food so much it was in between his toes. He was toes. a great guy, always positive. He had that big pedora. Yeah, pompadour. Very, pompadour. Annoying. Very annoying, though. He could. I, I liked him. I, liked I didn't him. find him annoying. Remember when they Rogan paid him to like get into the shower in the main room? Uh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Tell us that story. I, I don't remember it much, but I just remember Rogan paid him a lot of money to like get naked and get in the shower in the back green room of the main room or something like that. What did he give him a million dollars? I don't know. Five hundred thousand. He used to <laughs> Rogan used to pay him like a hundred bucks a night just to sit next to his car to make sure no one touched. That's him. cool. Right. Yeah. He's a big guy. I mean, he was a yeah, he was a man, nice man. guy. I really liked uh, Fat James. Yeah, I really yeah. did. He was well, so, uh, and I saw him at the J spot, and yeah. uh, he got up. I did not. I uh, ate with him once at Dupar's, and he, he literally ordered two of everything, like two pan- orders mm. of pancakes for his shows, and then asked the waitress for a diet coke. <laughs> 
<laughs> Do you think he'd eat these burritos? Oh, oh yeah. Sh- he'd They'd eat the wrapping. <laughs> yeah. I, I said to the waitress, give him a regular Coke. It's not going to kill him. So this guy's <laughs> living up in a tree house, and he's uh, yelling at his kids through the window. And There he is. Fat now, this, this is a story for you, uh, Red Band. You can ex- oh. explain this a little bit. I'm, I'm kind of confused. A Japanese company has issued some 3,700 marriage certificates to men who, who have fallen in love with an animated holograms it produces. The gate box devices, which sell for $1,500, have artificial intelligence and can talk to their D-I-G-I sexual owners. Whatever that means, D-I-G-I. Digi? Digi-sexual owners. Uh, uh, Alakana Condo, 36, spent $19,000 on a 40-guest fake wedding for his device. A oh fax, gosh. A fax wedding, F-A-U-X. That means fake, right? Yeah, faux. F-A-U-X. It's not faux. Don't they pronounce it I don't it know faux? what it is, but it's not faux. It ain't fax is it faux? either. It's <laughs> just... <laughs> uh, 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 That's so weird. His family missed out on the big day from... For mother, it was something to celebrate, he admitted. Tell us what's going on on this one, uh, Red Band. All right, so the, they have this hologram box in Japan, and it has a animated character, and it talks to you by your text messages and uh, in person, uh, but it's all automated. It's like Siri, like, you know, like on your phone, like, hey, Siri, turn on the whatever. And here it is right here, and so it looks like, it looks like, a, like you have a little, per, little animated girl, uh, it's kind of like, you know, like a uh, fake pet, you know. Mm. So uh, g- given this, the, the, the marriage certificates is just kind of like, uh, it's like fake. part of it. Yeah, yeah it's like Part fake. of the uh, <laughs> interesting, inter- very interesting technology is just well, coming out of our ears. It's, it's like the, one cool thing about it. It's definitely the beginning of the future when we're going to have hologram, like kind of like Star Wars Princess Leia's and shit like that everywhere. And we're going to be able to talk to each other over, you know, using holograms. Like, you're going to be able to have a podcast with Earl, and Earl doesn't even have to be here. Perfect. (laughs) It it reminds me of that ink pen with the girl, and you can turn it upside down, and the the dress comes off, and you see the breasts, the big, white, full, nippled breasts, and, and then you... Turn it up, and then her clothes are back on again. I want to get another one of those. Oh, yeah, pens. I used to go through my dad's. Doesn't sock that drawer. remind you of a pen like that? What yeah. kind of nipples? Oh, big, 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 big silver brown, dollar type. Brown yeah, ones. big round ones. Dark. I mean, uh, yeah. just, 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 uh, just. Uh, it's getting hot in here. <laughs> just, uh, just <laughs> big mean, getting. Big. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So that's that's an interesting story. So to red pants. <laughs> I, mean, I think you'll get one. I want one of these. <laughs> uh, uh, we're going to finish up soon here. Cruise ships played a significant role in seeding the carnivores around the globe. Health officials say more than 2,500 total uh, Corona-19 cases have been identified on 55 cruise ships touring the world, and at least 65 passengers and crew have died. Uh, Bill Maher had something on in one of his commentaries about cruise ships. It was great. Well, they're disgusting. Have yeah, you yeah. ever been on no, one? No, no, no. I, I, that's not my idea of a vacation. It's being on a, on a, on a boat with 3,500 freaking idiots for, for 12 or 7 days. You know? It's all germs, man. Like, it's just a germ-infected uh, Petri nonsense. dish. Petri yeah, I mean, dish. You, know, you want to be a cruise ship comic? I'll leave no that way. gig to uh, like Adam Hunter or something. No way. Jerry Seinfeld, 65 years old, has a new uh, uh, Netflix comedy special. The 65-year-old comedy icon shares a set of new material in performances recorded just before Corona, uh, Corona COVID-19 shutdown. Available for streaming Tuesday, May 5th, today on Netflix. Oh, I'd rather hear Michael Richards' new special. <laughs> Who are these people? Who are these people? I don't know, Jerry. It's a chair. It's always been a chair. C-H-A-I-R. I heard it was good. I heard the special was good, though. I mean, he's so good, but like, well, he's uh, he's he's uh, he's what you call mainstream. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, that's why you got to go, Michael Richards, off script. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is a this is a little bit of tips how the virus does and doesn't enter your home. So this is a pretty important one. Uh, uh, the main threat. Whenever you venture out these days, the virus is a concern. 
but the viral particles light enough to stay afloat in the air are less dangerous than you might fear. Focus on the bases. Stay six feet from others to avoid micro droplets spread by sneezing, talking, and breathing. And refrain from touching your nose, mouth, or eyes until you can thoroughly wash your hands. Clothing. <laughs> through, the, uh, through the lightest particles, stay airborne longer than and can't be inhaled. They don't swarm like little flies or gates. Now, it's, now they're saying it's actually, <laughs> there's a new uh, you strain of G- coronavirus. Uh, it's more contagious than... Wait, say that again? They're saying the coronavirus is now more contagious than wow. they thought. <laughs> ask them, you got to ask them nice. When you ask them to say it again, just say, please can say you please again, say that sir. again? Just don't bark orders at them, you know. You say that again. So That's rude. Red Band. So say rude. that again, sir? No, no, I don't, you know what I mean. Just, no, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the clothes. <laughs> Nats. G-N-A-T-S. <laughs> They're so light, uh, aerodynamics. Friend. Half the fun of this podcast is seeing the guests react to the podcast. Oh, I, 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 I <laughs> That's how we get listeners. You know, Take it all. They, 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 you know, they, 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 who t- taught you English? What that is is, you know, thinking you're going to say something and deciding uh, you're not going to say anything. That's what that is. I mean, you sound like an NBA player from the seventies. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, through the light. Uh, did you see Harold and Maud? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, is that the greatest? I keep telling. I feel like Harold right now. <laughs> <laughs> they should remake that where Maud's transgender. Or something. <laughs> That's the only way it would be able to get made today. There'd have to be yep. some kind of uh, yeah, like you know, freak of nature on there. League you know, of their they own. wouldn't go. You know, you, you have to have like. Three different ankles or some shit. Of Caitlyn Jenner. And, uh, you can wipe down purchases, but the risk of getting sick from handing, uh, handling packages is extremely low. It's sufficient to put things away and wash your hands. All right. That was good, man. I like that. Uh, this is the worst. Uh, this is a mega drought. A lot of people don't know about this. Hold on to your water. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the severe drought that has plagued the western United States for two decades is as bad or worse than any dry spell in the past 1,200 years. That's the conclusion of a new study into the... This is a study for you, uh, Earl. Uh, uh, study into the uh, mega drought that had been testifying wildfire seasons and depleting reservoirs. Researchers examined tree ring data and modern weather observations for nine states from Oregon and Montana down through California and New Mexico, as well as part of northern Mexico. We now have enough uh, observations of current drought and tree ring records of past drought to say that we're on the same path as the worst prehistoric droughts, said so-and-so and so-and-so from so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. Uh, his team identified four previous mega droughts in the 9th, 12th, 13th, and 16th centuries, Earl. Jesus. And uh, they found that the 19 year old period. Uh, Wait, 19 year old? What? <laughs> they said oh, the 19 year old period. The 19 year period from I've seen so, a few of those. They're so, un- <laughs> they're so very unbashful at that age. It's just oh, wonderful know. the way they can just. Well, uh, uh, you know, I. I was dating a few 19 year olds uh, and a lot of people are like oh you have daddy issues it's not true it was their uncle who fucked them (laughs) (laughs) now i'm going to the main room set oh wow (laughs) and uh so they say that the 19 year period from 2000 to 2018 was drier than the three earlier droughts on par with the fourth which stretched from 1575 to 1603 the team says climate change is responsible for about half the pace and severity of the current drought, a proportion that will increase as temperatures continue to rise. I just thought that was needed to be included in the items of interest. California is not bad in the drought right now, though, because we've had so much rain. Yeah, Look at the yeah. map. This is, like, pretty cool because usually we're fucked. Yeah. But Florida and Texas are fucked. Yeah, it's, you know... It, if it keeps going in this direction, it's going to be that dust bowl that they had back in the 30s or the 20s. Oklahoma. And yep. people just had to pick up your farm up in Bakersfield. Yeah. Those trees are going to perish, and your, you, you know, your relatives are going to have to get real jobs or something. They're going to have to do something. Yeah, they're thinking about going into podcasting. 
And why not? Everyone else has a podcast. Right. Well, Jesus Christ. Uh, here's one for you, Earl. Uh, the, the Los Angeles Lake has uh, repaid $4.6 million loan that the, the government gave him for, the, for help during the pandemic. Well, you got to really feel bad for them. I mean, you know, their owner just bought the ice house. And, like, what an <laughs> awful time to buy a comedy. <laughs> yeah, home. that unbelievable. Isn't that something? Well, it's perfect for them because they were about to remodel the whole thing. Oh, so okay. now they're... They're remodeling oh, they do a right now. Oh, that's good. Yeah. They're like doing it now. Yeah, perfect. I can hope you they imagine can. you buy a comedy club. You're like this yeah. is a great business to get into. And then I've never, I've that. never performed over there. That Are I you serious? Can you believe it? Well, when it opens back up, I'll get you on the show. Yeah. That's yeah, great. Yeah, I'd like to do that. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I've been there, but I've never ever stepped foot on the well, stage. First over show there. back, you're on it. You've been over there, right, Darren? Yeah, you've been over there, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, thanks to Red Band. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Red Band. The TSA conducted 20, 128,875 airport screenings of passengers, workers, and crew members on April 27th, and decrease, a decrease of more than 94% from March 1st before this whole thing happened. Uh, Detroit's car companies are targeting May 18th to resume production at their U.S. factories. Said so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so, including those... Located in states where lockdowns are lifted sooner. More than a month after closing their doors, General Motors, Ford, and Fiat Chrysler tentatively settled on the timeline. This week, after talks with the United Auto Workers Union and the Michigan Governor's Office, plant closures have essentially choked off revenue for the companies. Ford expects a $5 billion loss. Well, make better cars. Okay, this is Red Band's corner now. Yeah. He's going to help us out with these articles because uh, these articles. Are... Jesus, how many more are left? <laughs> We're just warming up. Now. Just warming up, man. I you no, it's we, almost only a, down to a few so more. We got things. the obituaries next. <laughs> and we got some wit and wisdom, and then uh, that's it. And then we're going to get into your love of the oh, 80s. Oh, my God. Then we get into my shit. <laughs> oh, and then we go yeah. back in the... Then we're going to interview you, and I have a letter to read. <laughs> Red Band may have something he wants to communicate with the audience as well. Don't be in a rush to leave. Oh, I got nowhere to go, to be honest. But. You know, this is only a one-week podcast. I don't want to come all the way to Burbank and do 30 minutes or a half hour Jesus. or an hour. We want to make it last. People can, people can listen to this in chunks. Jesus. You know, if they don't want to listen to the whole two hours, they can listen to it in chunks. They can listen to a half hour here, an hour here. Get right, right, Red Band? Yeah. Jesus, this podcast is the Joe pace. listens to it over and over again. <laughs> Joe who? Uh, uh, you can give me his last name. It's uh, Joe's, uh, oh. Joe, uh, Alex's friend Joe. This podcast has the pacing of an Expendables movie. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you kind of have to be patient. It just, you know, it, it, kind of. By the time, listen, here's, if everything works out right, the podcast will end, and you'll go straight from here to the ice house. It'll be ready to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hello. <laughs> Woo -ha. Mama, okay, Mama. Red Band, this is for you. Oh, okay. Uh, Apple's next MacBook could uh, come equipped with its own custom processor, bypassing chip giant Intel. Said so and so and so and so. After 15 years partnering with Intel for its central processing units or CPUs, Apple appears ready to switch to its own model based off the A14 processor in the next iPhone, which uses technology from ARM Inc. ARM based chips use less energy than Intel's offerings and have generally been geared towards mobile devices rather than laptops and desktops. But a slowdown in Intel's chip advancements have been blamed for the decline in Mac upgrades. While the first Mac chips won't be able, won't be able to rival the performance Intel provides, Apple is working on designing uh, designs that can uh, pack in 12 or more cores or processing units in place of the two-core Intel processors currently used in its entry level models. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. Let's get to the obituaries. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Intel's been making chips for a long time. And so I think switching over to a new chip is dangerous because. I mean, they're they're pretty much saying the same chip that you use in your iPhone, they're going to put in laptops, which to me seems ridiculous because, you, you know, you want the <laughs> fastest chip. You don't want some chip that's made for your phone in your computer. I don't know. Right. You don't want to put a a, a four-barrel carburetor in, right. a, in, a, in a Tesla. Yeah. And plus, 
they know like Intel knows that's their whole business making chips. They probably know more than yeah. in my opinion. Uh, get ready for the biggest Wi-Fi upgrade in 21 years, said so-and-so and so-and-so. Wi-Fi 6. The Federal Communications really? Commission voted last week to crack open a previously unlicensed plot on the uh, nation's wireless spectrum, freeing up more airways, airwaves, a lot more, than routers can, be, uh, can use to broadcast Wi-Fi signals. Routers currently can broadcast over two frequency bands, 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz. But these have become congested with too many competing signals in recent years. Adding a third band, 6GHZ, should offer faster and more reliable connections from the next generation of devices. The two band is spacious enough to handle up to seven maximum capacity Wi-Fi streams to broadcast simultaneously without interference. X5B and 67H can be more... Uh, 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 easily used on 7775 and upgraded to 2789 uh, on wideband 8FFG. So uh, that's ex- that's easy to understand. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you, yeah. you even read that story at 6G speed. Well, I'm trying to get done. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a little pressure from Earl, the big Earl, the predator. We've got well, some- don't call me the predator. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the a movie you liked. Look what I got. I even went and did some research about what predatoration really means this is your 1987 movie your favorite favorite movie well yeah it's a great movie <laughs> you, but you are a you are a i am not a you're predator. an expert no 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 oh, no. oh i tell you this like, is about the movie this any, is- any girl <laughs> i'm so sorry any girl you that's were- ever been with me has wanted the skakel salami i have not yeah. had to force myself oh, yeah. on anybody yeah. Yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah. Sure, some of them have been younger, but I like, wouldn't have a deviant on this show. Red Band wouldn't allow it. I mean, you know, I'm like Space Mountain. I'm the oldest ride in the park with the longest line, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, my so that's word. a Ric Flair joke. I'm stealing bits Damn from it. the rest. It is. I was gonna say that'd be a great T-shirt for you. Okay, this is this, this yeah, is it would be. this is the obituary <laughs> section. And Jesus these, Christ! I you have, might have a third one by the time you finish. I have two. I, <laughs> I have two great obituaries today, and I, I, I don't know which one to pick. Who do you want to go first, the golfer or the baseball player? The golfer. The quicker one. Okay. 87 years old, we lost Doug Sanders. Doug Sanders won 20 events on the PGA Tour and made a legend of fans with his snappy, rainbow-hued attire and easygoing personality. But his sporting uh, career was forever defined by a 30-inch putt. With one hole left at the 1970 Open Championship, the player known as the Peacock of the Fairways needed a four-shot par to defeat the great Jack Nicholson and win golf's most converted trophy. Converted trophy, He hit a long drive and a safe second shot onto the 18th green at Scott's, uh, Scotland's iconic St. Andrews. His first putt ended just short of the cup, and he agonized over the next shot, which missed by an inch. Sanders lost the 18th hole playoff against Nicholas by a stroke the following day, cementing his miss as one of the greatest chokes in sports mm. history. Great game, golf. Unbelievable. Grew up playing it at Bel Air Country Club. Huh. First time I heard the N word was there. <laughs> what, what, what are the green fees over there today? Or whether we had it back then, it must be like 200 back, bucks. Back then, it was 100 bucks. Now. Uh, it's, uh, it's probably three hundred dollars. Would you go with me to play over at the Trump uh, Golf Course there on the overlooking the ocean up in uh, Palos Verdes? Oh, I played there before. Really? What are the green fees? That's a public course too, isn't it? Back then it was Palos Verdes Country Club, but now it's the Trump National. But yeah, golf is fun when you got a nice view. It's just oh, Bel Air is like it's so hard to describe. You're in the nicest. Is that the one that... Uh, it's up in you know the hills of Bel Air. It's and, right behind uh, uh, that big hotel where they have all the award ceremonies? But, no, uh, it's, it's yeah. not behind any hotel. West. You know, it's west it's of... It's the Beverly Hills Hotel. Right, and it's west of about. that. It is, yeah. When you drive down that road... Uh, Sunset. Uh, uh, Sunset or uh, Wilshire. But every home yeah. on every fairway is 7 to 50 to $100 million. Oh, you mean there's houses on the golf course? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. So, like one time I shot a ball in Charles Bronson's backyard, and I went to go get it. Wow. And it's like, he came out and go, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I lost my ball. <laughs> oh, man, he thought you were a vigilante. Was he a vigilante? Was he dressed this up is, like a vigilante? Yeah, he looked like the guy from Death Wish. But then, like, on the second hole of Bel Air, to the right is Marymount High School, so I would purposely slice <laughs> <laughs> 
No, it's true. I would. It's an all-girls school. All oh, like oh yes, I Bel-Air, know. Bel Air, Beverly sunset. Hills. Yeah. So I'd slice my ball on purpose so I could go in there and go, "Hey, girls, have you seen my balls?" Oh <laughs> man. Trust me, a few of them ended up seeing them. Oh, that's. <laughs> I, I like to see the waiting list to get into that educational. Uh... Oh, my sister went there. She got kicked out. But oh. Two sisters went there. Yeah, we're gonna go golfing one of these days. Uh... It has to be at Bel Air. You can't play public after playing Bel Air. Uh, I had clubs, but I, I have such a limited space. I can't well, here's, s- store golf clubs, so I have to rent. Or do you have an extra set of golf? No. Clubs? Well, here's the crazy thing. Bel Air was so nice, and like they, they no minorities at the time. Uh, so when my dad sold the membership, I was like, "Well, I want to play golf with blacks and Mexicans and Jews and Asians." And there's a course on top. Puerto Ricans. Of, yeah, there's a course on top of the Sepulveda Pass. The Irish called mountain gate country club all minorities whites i joined my first day there my clubs got stolen it's true Could have been a coincidence. I, I only need i only need the i only need the one the driver uh the seven well, you need a putter too and a putter yeah. and maybe a two a two iron right. that's all i need four well, clubs a sandwich yeah and a sandwich you're right and, 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 and a sandwich well, Mountain, I said sandwich. A nine is a sandwich. good one. A nine is a good club too. Nine is yeah. fun. Mountain Gate's great, but it's built on a landfill, so it's pretty toxic. But it's oh, beautiful. It it's on top of the Sepulveda Pass, so the views. Have it's you ever so gone to? Have you ever heard of the one that's here in Burbank? It's like hidden right behind the, Warner Brothers Studios, Lakeside. Or, yeah, Lakeside. Oh, yeah. I didn't Bob even know Hope. it was there. I think Bob Hope hidden. played there. Yeah, yeah. it's the Bob Hope. It's where Notre Dame High played uh, our uh, oh. golf matches. I got a question, real quick, before we move on about golf. So at Griffith Park. I walk by the golf course, and there's always a lot of. I think they're Korean. Why is? Uh, have you noticed that before? Are Koreans big into golf, or it's big in Japan. Yeah, oh, Asians they love it. Early. They love wow. it. They I, love I, it. I hardly see anybody any other ethnicities playing golf. What's well, a rich man's uh, in mm. Japan? It's like they it's, love it. They love it more than kimchi. How's that? Yeah, mm. you know they love kimchi. I love kimchi. Yeah, kimchi. Yeah, mm. but it's a very segregated uh, world. The country club, you know, mm. like you have Hillcrest Country Club, which is for Jews. Uh, you know, Bel Air is pretty much for, uh, you know... Uh, oh, are these some of the residents on the golf course? Yeah. Like, dude, I'm telling you, it's the most beautiful... First of all, you're in the most beautiful real wow. estate in the world, and with homes that look like that... Wow. It's, it's you know, the Hiltons have a place there. Uh, OJ had a place there before he killed two people, <laughs> allegedly. Oh, my God, just beautiful. And, and, and this pro- is every home is like this. And you know what? When you have a home like this, it's not like you can go to J.C. Penney or Macy's and pick out a couch. When you have a home like this, everything has to be custom made. Everything has to be, you know, you know. When you have a home like this, your couch is not twelve hundred dollars from uh, from uh, uh, sit and sleep. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It, it's more than just a house. You gotta you gotta furnish it with all sorts of high end stuff. You know. But it's this just, is every home, dude. Yeah. Like, like it's, you're playing on the ninth hole. There's Conrad Hilton's house, and then to the left is Will oh. Chamberlain's house. And it's just, it's, you know, you can't go to home in the valley and furnish your house on yeah. the golf course. You know? Ikea or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, home Depot. All right. So I'm going sli- to uh, move on to the last paragraph of this. Uh, oh, we're not done with this guy's obituary? No, the, the last paragraph is usually the most... Most interesting. Sanders was often on the brink of stardom, said the New York Times, which is uh, upright stance and compact, uh, compact swing. The result of a uh, dil- uh, debilitating neck condition. He won five PGA Tour events in 1961 and three the next year. But as with the 1970 Open, Sanders became famous for his defeats, finishing runner-up one stroke at three other majors. Even so, with his quick wit and flashy clothes, Sanders wore vibrant pinks, yellows, and purples on the green. He made a fortune. Yeah, you know, I can't stand that when people say, oh, that shirt is gay, or those pants are gay. You know what I tell them? I say, you know what? Clothes aren't gay. People are gay. This pair of pants can't fuck you. Yeah, not This shirt can't fuck you. That poncho is very straight. Yeah. Yeah. Sanders won vibrant pinks, yellows, and purples on the green. He made a fortune in endorsements and advertising deals, which paid for the fleet of expensive cars and nights out with celebrity, celebrity pals, uh, including Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin. Still at the high, high living, couldn't take his mind off of that missed putt in 1970. 
Sanders replied, oh, only every, oh, he said, uh, asked years later if he ever thought about it. Sanders replied, oh, only every four or five minutes. <laughs> so how often do you play golf, Earl? <laughs> now that I don't have clubs because they were stolen, I haven't played since that day. Yeah, I had clubs, but I, I can't, I, I don't have room to just store something that I don't use that often. Well, I had custom made clubs just because I like really? them a little longer. Yeah, you, you're a tall uh, guy. You got to have I, lo- Well, I have a weird body. My arms are long, so. That's like, cool. But I'm not super tall, but, uh, you know, I was just like, fuck golf. You know, and, this, and this one is the last obituary. This is Steve uh, uh, Dalkowitzki. Oh, yeah, I know him. Okay. Say, him, say the last name. Well, let me see. Uh, a fan, uh, Steve. Oh, baseball. Steve uh, Dalkowski. Dalkowski. This is a great. <laughs> Darker whiskey. What a life this guy had. <laughs> 81 years old. He passed away. God bless him. Steve, uh, we'll just call him D. Steve D was a great, uh, the greatest. Stevie D, the comic. Stevie D. <laughs> Steve D was the greatest, never was in baseball. A physically unimposing left-hander, D could hurl a fastball with such phenomenal speed that legends of players swear it never been equaled. The hardest thrower I ever saw, said Hall of Fame manager Carl Ripken, Sr. It's a Cal Ripken. Cal Ripken, Sr., who claimed the pitcher approached 150 miles per hour. Wow. That's impossible. Delosky had everything... <laughs> <laughs> explained one former coach except control red band he was real fast but he had no control <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god how frightening he was fast but he couldn't throw a strike evidently uh except control he walked batters as often as he struck them out and sometimes sent a pitch over the backstop or into the bleachers through nine major league seasons, no coach could find the cure. And, he, uh, and his inspiration for the errant pitcher, Nuke Loosh, in the 1988 movie Bull Durham, mm. never played a major league game. He was just as wild off the mound. He was a, cruiser, a carouser, I guess a skirt chaser. It's hard not to chase a skirt. You know, well, it just depends, man. You know, they you reach a certain level of fame, they come to you. It's like it's tough. Yeah, that's what Arsenio Hall said. Arsenio Hall said he wouldn't get in an elevator by himself. He always had a witness because he was afraid that a woman would try to say bad things. You know. Well, now it's and he, sa- era. he said that he said he said a woman would give him a blowjob, like she owed him money. Yeah, well, she probably did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Billy Graham was like that also. He, he never played uh, Wouldn't Go Alone in an Elevator. Yeah. Yeah, you got to watch out. They'll and say me, bad stuff. Me too, time's up. and You know, they'll yeah. punch themselves in the face. They'll yeah. break their own nose and say you did it. You know. You know, scratch their earlobe or break an eyelash or maybe <laughs> break one of their high heels and say he tripped me yeah, and I mean, kicked me in the you buttocks. Know I, you know what I found out? I never even heard of this. He called me B-I-T-C-H. They'll stab, you know? you can be, they'll stab you and then give themselves a couple stabs and be like... Yeah, they'll stab themselves. They'll, they'll take a scissor and cut their hair. Wow. And say that he wanted a lock of my hair as a souvenir. I mean, you know, I've been falsely You know, there's nothing you can... You can't put past... Put, pa- put anything past them. Well, especially if you dated them and then you have a bad breakup and then, you know... They they'll lock. rip their cl- uh, clothing or maybe unsnap a bra and break the, the, the clasp, you know, hmm. how you put it back on, and they'll, they'll, so yeah. you can't put the clasp back on. Yeah, I mean, they'll yeah. show that to the officer and say, look at the broken clasp. He walked about as it's often... Uh, Sounds like you have some experience <laughs> <laughs> with these he techniques. Walked, <laughs> a lot of details with this. Yeah. <laughs> he was just wild off the mound. It's, it's good. He had the equivalent of Michelangelo's gift, wrote Bill Dorham, screenwriter and director Ron Shelton, but could never finish a painting. Mm. He was born in New Britain, Connecticut, when his father was a tool and dye maker. Everybody's, everybody's father was a tool and dye maker. You know, how many tool and dye makers were there out there? <laughs> He's doing Not enough. <laughs> 
And his, his mother uh, worked in a ball bearing factory. I bet. Uh, a star athlete in high school, he threw back to back no hitters and notched 24 strikeouts in a single game. He signed with the Baltimore Orioles in 1957. And uh, with a four thousand dollar new car headed to Kingston, Tennessee, to play in the uh, Appalachian League. He went one and eight his first season. Then he struggled with the power of his own arm. One fastball tore off a part of a batter's ear. Oh wow! <laughs> oh, this you can't. This is this is this is terrific. Oh. And to this day, that who, we got to interview that guy. Can we get that guy on the podcast? He probably has his own podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what would it be called? Uh, one ear jack. One ear jack. <laughs> probably are. Did you hear about the Korean baseball? They have a laugh track. There's nobody oh. in the stands, so they're oh, yeah, they're yeah, playing yeah. a really? music. They're playing the sound of people talking. Oh. Hey, I'll have another popcorn, Bob. Oh, is that a strike? You know, hey, look uh, at the tits on that girl. <laughs> <laughs> hey, brother, 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 brother. <laughs> He's no. Don't don't be a pitcher. Be, be a, a belly itcher or something. What was that? <laughs> what games were you going to? Yeah. <laughs> so, so it gets real good now. This guy, Jeez, it's like Twilight Zone or something, huh? He's, Imagine a whole baseball. He's coming apart now. He struggled with the power of his own time. His performance improved in 1963, and he was fitted for a Baltimore uniform. But while pitching a spring training game, training game, he felt a pop in his elbow. And his hand went numb. Mm. And now this is the last paragraph. This is where it all comes apart. This is the true Hollywood story coming up, Earl. Remember that show, The True Style Hero? Oh, that was a good one. Does this guy have a Netflix special? Oh, wait till you hear what happened to him next. He tried to come back from the injury, said uh, so-and-so and so-and-so, but the, the lightning was gone. He disappeared for years, becoming a, a migrant farm worker in California, living oh. on the street and failing at numerous rehab attempts. How fast was he throwing those apples? And on Christmas Eve, and on Christmas Eve in 1992, a family found, found him disorientated in Los Angeles laundromat, took him in. Get him into comedy. And, re- and, you, and you united him with his sister. Can he roast battle? She placed him in an assisted living facility blocks from the high school baseball field where he first found glory. He spent 26 years there gazing out the window and compliment and uh, thinking about his unlikely path. What do I think about? He said to a journalist in 1996, strikes. Oh. <laughs> strikes. I love those obituaries. Not that they passed away, but just the interesting lives that these people live. And uh, now it's all going to be about you, Earl. It's oh, all uh, going to be about you. Okay. Just got to go through these wit and wisdoms real quick. <laughs> <laughs> time, time is spent in youth is sometimes all the freedom one ever has. This is why people don't realize. This is like summer vacation. Everybody wants to go to back, back to work. Every job I've had, people want to take sick days. They want to go on vacation. They never think about it when they're on vacation. They can't wait to call in sick. They hate their job. They don't want to go back. And all these people are protesting, open it up, open it up, open it up. It's like being a kid again. Hey, if I'm ever given uh, 10 minutes to live, can you do a podcast? Uh, time, is, <laughs> time is spent in youth is sometimes all the freedom one ever has. The hospitals alone remind us of the uh, equality of man. A cynic is not merely one who reads... Uh, Bitter lessons from the past. He is one who is permanently disappointed in the future. Wow. You like that one, Errol? Yeah, yeah, especially right now. It's hard when nature <laughs> does not respect you, your intentions. Uh, Wait, can I just... She never does exactly respect them. Go ahead, Darren. I, I love... These, You're on, Darren. Okay, these wits and wisdom... I. I liked it when you keep your normal pace. I know you're trying to hurry it up, but just just give us give us one at the slow pace that you normally do because I actually like that slow pace, slower thanks, pace. Thanks, right. thanks, Darren. Yeah. Just, yeah. just give us one. Just give us one at that it regular is, pace. It is hard when See? nature does not respect your intentions, and she never does exactly exactly respect them. Every revolutionary opinion draws part of its strength from a secret conviction that nothing can be changed. George Orwell. Hmm. <laughs> Comments, Earl? Anything? No, no, I'm good. 
The two most powerful warriors are patience and time. And money. Try and buy something. Uh, tell them what I do every time I listen to them. When I'm in my car and every time that song comes on the radio, I oh, call Beverly you up Hills. and I, I, I crank it. Beverly Hills, that's, that's where, where I want to live. Beverly, Beverly, Beverly. Bow, bow, bow. We, that's Weezer, Beverly Hills. God, it's a great song. I Pork and it. beans, too, but I hear vegans hate that song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing my Weezer bits. <laughs> and the last one, the easiest kind of relationship for me is with 10,000 people. The hardest is with one. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, it's true. All right, that's it. That's it for items of interest for uh, May 5th, 2020. And now we're going to get to why we're really here, and that is to talk to the great big Earl. Tell us what this infaccination is with this 1987 production of the movie Predator. It's just a great, it's the greatest action movie of all time. Man. Is it your favorite? It is. You take eight actors who can't act, and yet somehow... <laughs> Arnold, Arnold was in it. Ar- Schwarzenegger's Withers, in it. Withers. Uh, Carl Weathers. He was the best actor in the group, which tells you everything. Uh, you had a pro wrestler, Jesse Dabati Ventura, who'd never uh, acted before. Sonny Landham, who... Uh, by the way, I only do one impression. This is right where he gets shot in the neck. This is the best scene when they all shoot. It's one of the most homoerotic scenes ever when they all are shooting and the camera's just panning across. I mean, we'll get to that. That's Bill Duke. He was the pimp in American Gigolo. Oh, Bill Duke. Right. He got thrown out. He got thrown off yeah. the balcony. He has an acting class I, I saw. I would take it. Like, yeah. he's such a good actor. But the scene, it's like in 20 seconds. I had a bad experience in my last acting class. I, There's, I don't uh, know if I'm going to go back to acting. But watch this scene where they're all standing together, all oiled up and muscled. They, didn't, they, just, they just wanted my money. They didn't care if I knew how to act or not. I felt, I felt used. I felt abused. This is how I am at Potluck when I see all the comics coming at me. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> He's... Now, Predator. Predator. I did there see... we go. Like, watch when they're all standing next to each other. If this doesn't get you pumped up. That looks cool, man. It's the one shot. It's coming. There's Sonny Landham, who was in porn before this. But they can't even see the Predator. But but you, you rarely can. <laughs> Unless it's the 6 o'clock news. Hey, this oh. is going to piss off the gardener. All this damage to all the nice trees and all the palms. Well, I identify a lot with the Indian in this movie. Because, you know, 20 years of comedy. You know, this guy always knew there was someone out there trying to fucking kill him. He just couldn't see him. That's how I feel about L.A. comedy. It's <laughs> always someone out there. I, I don't know where they are, but they're there. And they're out there And they're watching. And they're trying I believe to fucking it. kill me. That's me, too, holding on to the punchline an extra fucking <laughs> 10 seconds. All right, let me, let, me, let me read a little of this, because this is, this is all about this movie. Uh, predation is a biological uh, biological interaction where one orgasm one orgasm the predator kills and eats another orgasm its prey uh, organism right it, yeah that too <laughs> it is one of of a family of common feeding uh, uh, feeding behaviors behaviors that includes <laughs> I thought it was behavior I, I didn't want to butcher this article uh, 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 parasitism and micro uh, predat- uh, predation which usually do not kill the host the paradis- uh, uh, paradisism which always does eventually it is distinct from scavenging on dead prey through many predators also scavenge it overlaps with hive hiveberry as a seed predator, is both a predator and a bio predator. I thought this was Alien at first. This yeah. is Alien was a good movie too with that Jess, uh, that skinny little actress, uh, Sigourney uh, Weaver. Sorry. Well, I like Aliens better, the sequel with yeah. Bill Paxton. I like it when they're trapped in the ship up in space and that something's inside and it's going to get them. Voyage to the bottom of the sea was like that. Remember when the big gorilla was loose in the voyage to the bottom of the sea? Oh, yeah. yeah. That was a scary episode. I had to shut one eye. (laughs) Predators may actively search for prey or sit and wait for it. Yeah. Go go on Tuesday nights to roast battle. (laughs) The predator access will attack it may involve ambush, 
Oh, you do comedy too? (laughs) (laughs) Pursuit. uh, uh, I had a little tryst with my acting coach once up in the belly room. Oh, I bet. There's been more loads shot in that room than a Chinese laundry mat. It's closed. It's a safe venue. Anyway, I, I printed this up just so I could just be a better host because I know how... Because of the Predator movie? You, yeah, you yeah. Know. This is this is tells me a little about the what what, well, what it's all about. A, I think that's a different. Uh, I don't think that has anything to do with Predator the movie. Oh no 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 no! Look, pre- predation. This I is think... all about it. This is all about the movie. This is this is about a a, a biohazard that it eats off its host. Or is that Alien? I think that's Alien. Which is the one where he's in the test tube? Well, did you? That's one, Alien. What did you see? <laughs> He says, he puts the wire in the test tube. <laughs> That's uh, taken in the ass seven. <laughs> My best scene is when he goes, let me out. I won't hurt you. Just let me out. That might be 2001 Space Odyssey. That's one of my favorite, too. Well, another good one that's under the radar is the very first, you know, Predators had like a thousand sequels. Alien versus Predator, where... The alien and the predator armies of both are fighting, and so the predator wins, but he dies. So the end uh, scene is they show a bunch of predators having a funeral for their leader who died, and they all walk away, and the camera's still <coughs> focused on the dead predator, and then you see the alien come out of the predator. It's like a really good. Which is the mm-hmm. one with the uh, Matson? Uh, Michael Madsen? What, what alien is that where there was... That's th- Reservoir Dogs. No, 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 no. There's an alien involved where they're taking over. Well, he did so many movies. He wasn't in any of the Predator movies. He, he, there's one where the aliens, uh, she comes down and uh, infects them, and they have to find it and kill it. I, 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 I'm not sure on that one. Do you have any... Uh, I know some of my listeners are interested for you to... Uh, uh, in addition to doing the Tommy impressions, uh, I do do a perfect impression of the Indian from Predator. Can we? Can we Sonny hear that? Landon. Well, I mean, is it possible to uh, uh, play maybe a, a, a scene in Predator where he uh, his name's Sonny Landon, uh, where he speaks, and then I can compare. You can compare. Cool. But I, I'll do the impression first. Maybe it's not po- plausible to uh, uh, like that's where he dies. Uh, this is how I feel in comedy. I'm like the Indian in Predator. He just kills himself at the end of the movie. He just says, fuck it. This is me. Uh, one night. Oh, there's the, the Indian in... Uh, uh, the, the, this is going to be me one night at the comedy store. I'm just going to take out my knife and kill myself. <laughs> this is how I feel. He just said, fuck it. Wow. He's going to commit Harry Canary? No, but see, what you have to do is the Predator has to see a weapon on you. And he knew that. So this is me. Like, when Adam tells me he's not the booker anymore, I'm just going to... Kill, kill myself to the next booker. He's not. He doesn't talk in this scene. There, there I am on the ledge of the. He's with Jody show. Foster. He was the one screwing Joey Jody Foster in uh, uh, Taxi Cab Driver. Oh wait, wait. Get it to that one. Uh, wait. Uh, put it back to the other scenes, like the one where he's with Schwarzenegger right there. Uh, Billy Predator. There's something in those trees, Major. <laughs> Let's hear it again. There's something in those trees, Major. <laughs> I guess it's nothing. He's been acting squirrely all morning. Squirrely all morning. There it is. Yeah. And do you have some taglines for yeah, us from the comes, movie? Here comes, yeah. Billy! Billy! He comes out to him. Of course, they got the black guy watching the Mexican chick. <laughs> Look at this cunt, like every girl in my past about to hit me with a tree. <laughs> okay. uh, you got to get the shot with the bicep in there. Billy. See, he's a movie star. I like my movie stars to look like movie stars. I, I, this Tom Hanks guy, he doesn't, he doesn't look like a movie star. Yeah, you see that and you feel like, I need to work out and eat right. Here it comes, here it comes. Looks like a muffler salesman. There's something in those trees. What is it? Billy! Billy. Something in those trees. What the hell is wrong with you? I guess it's nothing, Major. There's something in those trees. Something in those trees. Wow. I guess it's nothing, Major. See, he knew. 
This is me when I walk by the Laugh Factory. <laughs> <laughs> I know Jamie's out there, but I, I can't see him. Sorry, this is a long scene. I'm hey, sorry buddy. about that. And some, 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 some taglines, too. Uh, you picked the wrong guy to mess with. What? I, One of the taglines from the movie, you picked the wrong people I, to mess with. I don't know about that. I, you're, maybe it's a deleted scene I never saw. <laughs> yeah. There's uh, no... But that was the great thing about this movie is you had like the eight worst actors on the planet, but you put them together and the movie worked. Uh, and the girl. Nothing like... It has ever been on Earth before. Well, that's Bill Duke's line. Okay, okay, so I'm getting warm. Well, you're getting warm, but you're not giving me the exact line, so it's a little hard to Well, end. no, well, it's not my favorite movie. It's yours. Well, I know, but you're not giving me the right lines. This is when they're I asking... I apologize. I'm doing the best I can Well, you got to do research. better, bro. <laughs> how about, how about this? This is what happens when you have a three-hour podcast. What happened... Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I have, to, I have to read a letter, too. Oh, I, wait, what? <laughs> I, I, it this came, po- I, let me t- I gotta be honest with you. If this podcast were on 9-11, I would have rooted for a quicker plane. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they, can, they can listen to it in chunks. They don't have to see it through. Plus, uh, What it, was the line again? I'll try and get to the scene. Uh, it came for the thrill of the hunt. I tell it you one picked thing, the wrong man to hunt. That, that, that's, that line was not in Predator. It says, it says tag lines. That might have been Predator 2. Says taglines. With Gary. I'm telling you, I've seen Predator a thousand times. That line was not in the movie. Uh, let me try it again. Let me try it again. <laughs> Nothing like it has ever been on Earth before. That's the line Bill Duke is telling him. So then That's why a, would these other two lines well, be I with this one? I didn't write the Wikipedia page. I don't know. Right. I'll tell you one thing, Major. All right. I Arnold Swazen. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I drew a line of fire straight at it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing on this Earth. Uh, major... major uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Carl Weathers, Schwarzenegger, uh, Elipi Ili- Ili- Carlo, <laughs> Bill Duke, Jessica uh, Jesse Ventura, Sonny, Sonny uh, Landon, Landon, and Shane Black, who wrote the movie, was the first guy killed. Richard <laughs> Richard Shane, he, this, wanted, he wanted to get back to the trailer. <laughs> this, I bet he did. Well, well, here's some trivia. If you want some trivia about Predator, first of all, Jean Claude Van Damme was the original Predator. But he broke his foot in the costume. Oh. So they had to get Kevin Peter Hall, who died of AIDS from a blood transfusion. Damn. He broke his foot while filming? Because he wasn't a nimble enough. You know, it's a very bulky costume. But I got this movie, my love of this movie got me signed to the number one voiceover agency. Because I go in for the audition and they said, you're ready for your monologue, right? I'm like, oh, I wasn't prepared for that. They're like, yeah, yeah, you're supposed to prepare a two minute monologue. So I'm like, okay. And I just did a scene with Carl Weathers and Schwarzenegger. Because I, 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 I had the whole scene memorized. So I just did it like it was my own monologue. Do you, you, remember, a, do you remember some of it? You sat us up, the CIA, the cabinet <laughs> minister, <laughs> dropped the secrets of a scene on the meat grinder. It's all bullshit. <laughs> Very good. Do you have a sound booth at home in your private residence? I do. So you can... Uh, I mean, my can, setup isn't like this, but it's... Well, but you can send them what they need. I, now, you, everything's done uh, at home. You can't go in and, uh, and uh, do a read. Yeah, like, the, guy on, uh, the guy on The Simpsons, what's his name? He wanted more money. I think they had to Harry. give him more money. Harry, Harry Shear. Yeah, he, he was making a trillion dollars every couple of days, but that wasn't enough. He wanted more money. Remember that, but, uh, Red Band? Well, you always want more, you know. It's like these girls I used to date, you know, they want a house, then they want a mansion, then they want a fucking back. After you date him in the beginning, it's okay, and then it try, then it, then then their agenda based starts to seep in. Oh yeah. After a while, you can see what's happening here. You're on a TV show, they want you to be in a movie. You're on a movie, they want you to be in a cartoon. You're on a cartoon, they want you to be in an animated movie. These fucking cons. Sorry. (laughs) Earl's actually in a really popular cartoon now called The Jellies. Yeah. So I play. Wait, I'm the wait, only white guy on it. Where can we All see right, that? Honey, just cool. in time for a blueberry avocado smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> what channel is that, Earl? Adult Swim. Dynamite. I'm the only white guy on the show. It has a built-in GPS. I have never. Been I was white. the only white guy on my wife and kids. Yeah, I bet. But here's the funny thing: like in the second season, we did our scenes with each other in the booth. I'd never met the people who play my wife and son. Mm-hmm. So when I walked into the booth, they're like, who are you? I'm like, oh, I'm Barry. Who are you? They're like, oh, we're your wife and son. That's so hilarious. And they're, and they're like, you're white. I'm like, well, you're black. So uh, <laughs> yeah. we got that out of the way. 
Now tell us about the, uh, the, the beating that car character up at the roast battle. That was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Well, it was controversial, but like, you know. I told, And I watched I, you. You came out with knee pads, and you came out like you were, it was just great. You know, you know, it was just very clever. Well, I told them what to do, but of course the network didn't listen to me. I said, this is who you should put me up against, and, you know, it'll be fun. And then, you know, but they they wanted, I'm... Uh, performer so like they would put me against people they thought were boring but they wanted to see when because jimmy carr is great but he just reads his jokes he's just like no i know and you know what's true they you know what i think it is too uh earl and the red band and uh, darren carter will agree with me they have to come up with the idea they don't want you to be the one that even though you're right they want to have they don't want their autonomy uh stepped on you know what i mean you, oh, absolutely. They have to be the one saying, even if it's wrong, they want to be the one saying the decision. Like, it I, validates their position or their job. But I gave them the blueprint. Like, this is who I should go up against first. You know, cause and they rejected that. They're like, no, no, we have a different plan for her. And I'm like, okay, well, this is who I should go up against. And they're like, this is like... You know, it, gets, just, it gets really involved because everybody's v- viring... V- what's the word? Viring... Uh, you know, when everybody's trying to get the same thing, vining, veering, uh, well, vying. But I honestly... Huh? Vying? Vying. Well, everyone wants to win, <laughs> but, like, yeah, they're vying. <laughs> no, they're know, vining. When, you know, when people are trying to get the same thing, they're all vining. V- pining, pining. They're uh, pining away. No, that's wrong. That's well, wrong they're all Darren. trying for the top spot, but I was, like, since I was on the show from day one, I knew what worked on the show. Like, you know, you have to have people who know each other you know, going up against each other so they can go in on each other. But, you know, they had me up against some dude I'd never met before, like, and he didn't know me. So it was just like, you know, and like they should have had me go up against like Steve Renazizi because we were friends or Ralphie and, you know, because we we're friends and we could go in on each right, other. Right, and you'd have more in common to talk yeah, about. like I'd never met Jimmy Carr before. So, uh, you know, or any of my other opponents. So. And when did, when did you come out to California? I, at birth. Wow. <laughs> Wait, who does? You do like the research Argus does when I did his. <laughs> when I did Argus's podcast, he was like, So, uh, Earl, you're from Sherman Oaks, right? I'm like, No, I grew up in Bel Air. <laughs> like, so, you went to Loyola High? I'm like, No, I went to Notre Dame High. Like, he had every fact about me wrong, but I love the show still. <laughs> now, I see why they call this dead air. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, my listeners, my listeners, you know, they, they can go and use the bathroom, or maybe they want to. Who are your listeners? Hospice clinics? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, no, I told Red Band once. You know, Red Band, I don't care if this is a podcast. If I have nothing to say, I'm not going to say anything. Well, you which got is, that which is, down. Which is bad, you know, yeah. really, I guess. No. But uh, No, this is great. So I decided, love everyone in this room. I'm, just, I'm so we happy you, you decided too, to come on the podcast. But I really mean it. Very, I, I like under 10 people in L.A. comedy. Like, comedy in general, <laughs> probably. You are three of the people I would... If I quit comedy tomorrow, I would still keep in touch with the three of you. Right. So... Oh. It's true, though. You know, there's a lot of assholes in this business. Hey, Earl, great set. Uh, I haven't gotten up yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the joke we all do, like you and I do when we see each other, but that actually happened to me one night. Wow. And then I had a bringer show promoter at the comedy store. I won't say his name, but it's not too hard to figure out. He's like, hey, congrats, and I'm dying up here. I'm like, well, it just got canceled. What are you talking about? <laughs> Oh, I blew that audition. God, I blew that one. Well, who were you, the Booker of the Tonight Show? They wanted me to play the doorman who was upset that somebody was on stage and I've been playing my dues for a long time. It was a real simple thing. They should have just hired me outright. They shouldn't have made me audition. They don't understand it. And but that, even that uh, you know, goes into like roast battle, how they kind of messed up, in my opinion, the, the vibe of the show. Like, I'm dying up here, and I was a very small part on that show. Like, it was like one step ahead of the boom operator in the credits. Uh, like they didn't, they didn't make it dark enough. I thought, like you know, comedy's a dark fucking business. Like you know, they got Brody's picture right there. Like he's the ultimate. You God know. rest his soul. Oh yeah, but I mean, like people would be like, "Well, Earl, it's not that funny of a show." I was like, "Well, it's not a fucking sitcom with the laugh track. It's like comics kill themselves. We bitter. We're jealous. We're." You know, girlfriend cheats on you with another comic. Like that's the. A lot of comics have anxiety. I have it. You know. Uh, 
Uh, this is a letter. Uh, this is the letter portion of the dead air. This is a letter that is. is You're not going to read that whole fucking thing, are you? No. Oh just, fuck, dude. It's uh, be patient now. Be Please. patient. I've been here for two hours. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, uh, we wrap it up after the letter, I guess. But there's what so do you much do for more. A wrap up. Read War and Peace. Uh, <laughs> <geez>. <laughs> I'm sorry. You, you think it should just be an hour, huh? I, got a piece no, no. Think... I, want, I want to hear this letter. Well, i done research, and Red Band's probably the guy to talk to. Like, he's like the king of podcasts. I'm just a ham and egger. But, like, you know, I, I think people tend to tune out, yeah. uh, I would say, after an hour. Yeah. A lot of people don't finish podcasts. They'll start, and then usually about an hour, hour, 15 minutes, they'll stop, have to do something. And never finish the rest of it. Never come back. Yeah. Huh? I hope that's not the case. Uh, oh, you're great, dude. I'm just saying, for, for, in my personal... Uh, right. Well, that's why I saved the letter for the last. Jesus. That'll get people maybe to tune in, you know? They'll tune stay, in. Stay tuned in. If they haven't tuned in by now, bro, like Richard Crenna <laughs> said to Stallone, it's over, Johnny. <laughs> jo- oh, that's a great scene. I that's love a, it. That, that's another guy I identify with. Oh, man. In terms of comedy, Rambo. I just came in to do an open mic, and then uh, two hours later, I want to blow my brains out. <laughs> like, I don't identify with other comics. Like, you know, I don't identify with Seinfeld or, you know, Chris Rock. I identify, like, with the Indian from Predator. Like, <laughs> Bill Paxton and Aliens, always negative. They're out to get us. We're all going to fucking die. That's how I feel in comedy. You know who my hero is now? Uh. Sipowitz. Oh, the guy who killed the guy on the subway? No, the, <laughs> and, and the detective in NYPD Blue. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> oh, that poor son of a... It's a wonder he's not dead of a stroke. <laughs> he is just constantly pissed off. Oh, my God. We're not going to wait for Darren. This is a letter. It's not dated. It's, uh, it's to the manager, the comedy store, Sunset Boulevard, Los Angeles, California. And it's a gentleman by the name of Tony Cox. Uh, Dear Sir, Madame... I was in your establishment on Tuesday evening, the 12th of September, at around 11 p.m. I was out for an enlightening evening of humor and entertainment. Unfortunately, I found neither. The comic who was finishing his segment off as I was paying my entrance fee sounded somewhat humorous. When I eventually entered the building and took my seat, I found out to my dismay that his humor had turned to the racial content which seemed to be the theme of the evening. (laughs) <laughs> that's the comedy store <laughs> so far it matches up I did uh, I did however find some things quite funny not the racial jokes in parentheses he was followed on stage by a musical comic who was both witty comical entertaining and intelligent then came the worst of the worst a young man whose entire spoken vocabulary was sw- was full of verbal abuse to everyone Not a sentence passed through his lips that did not contain the word fuck. I could not even bear to listen to his act. I am not easily upset nor offended by people's points of views, but when they come from the mouth of an ignoramus who knows nothing of the subject he is verbally abusing, then I take offense. He could be talking about 50 comics. The rest of the audience felt much the same due to their response to his so-called humor. The funniest thing was the fact that he blamed the audience for the response to his act or, or lack thereof. He finished his segment with one of the least with, with the last torrent of abuse and then poorly introduced the next comic. Just when I thought the evening might be saved, the next comic's first words were honky and then anger. Oh. oh, my God. Oh. All, right, now, well, all right, now you got He's me back. He's talking about Paul Mooney. He's talk- Paul Mooney came up after me. Oh, oh, I was prepared to listen to no more of this and left. I can't believe you just said the word. I'm reading the letter. It's in the letter. I mean, it, this is a letter that the comedy store gave me. You know, this is, this is, uh, this is not yeah, made up. Dude, it's a different era, bro. Like, people don't care if it's in a letter. Well, they have to care if it's in a letter. It's in a letter. I'm not saying it because I'm saying it. I'm saying it because it's in the letter. This is dead air. This, I don't want my audience to think I'm baby fucking them. I want to give them the real thing. You know, these are people are intelligent. I don't want to. This is not the. Uh, 
I uh, think Holt, Holtzman's on to something. You could just carry around a letter everywhere you yeah. go that has the N word. A laminated yeah. letter. Oh, well, that's what it says. It says. Yeah. Uh, Wait, what was the line again? I didn't, it says. What was uh, the line again? Oh, Paul Mooney. What were Mooney's uh, first two just words? Just when I thought, <laughs> just when I thought the evening might be saved, the next comic. So first words were honky and then <laughs> oh, Jesus. I was prepared to listen to no more of this and left. I don't know why I'm sweating. I, I, know. I hear that word. I, I'm a bleeding hot liberal. I, everybody knows I'm just reading the letter. Well, I listen. don't think they're going to put two and two together and think I'm a racist. Well, I didn't say you were. I don't say the N word in public. <laughs> well, it's in the letter. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> in public. All right. I will say this. You pronounced Arnold's last name. I think you said like Arnold Schwarzenegger or something. Yeah. And I thought, that's kind of clever. You I should sure start pronunciated that. that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you do not take my letter personally. I am hoping that by writing this letter, you may be aware of some of the things going on on your stage. I am sure a lot of comics out there do not have the to use this vile form of humor to entertain the public. I thought that by coming to your club that I would find a fresh new avenue of humor. Well, fuck you. Uh, it, it would seem that I could stay at home and watch established comics do routines that have somewhat thought out messages. I would have thought that this day and age, these uh, that these public uh, performers of self-expression would be used for more worthwhile or lighter subjects. Well, stay home and talk to your grandmother. You want a lighter subject, you stupid ass. Not for the racially bashing someone else's race or beliefs. I uh, thank you for taking the time out to read my letter, and I would like to say that someday in the near future, I will be visiting your venue again. Yours sincerely, Tony Cox. So this is not dated. This, evidently, this was some time ago, and uh, I used to work with uh, Paul Mooney, you know, the late night in the OR, and... And, uh, you know, I was working things out, and perhaps uh, he misunderstood uh, my vein of thought, perhaps. Uh, it's just t- probably a misunderstanding. Well, I can't speak for Mr. Cox myself, but... Uh... So I thought that's the, uh, that's the letter for, the, uh, for this week. And uh, Darren Carter, do you want to tell us where you're going to be soon? You're going to be on the road anyplace? Uh, as far as I know, I'll be... Uh, <laughs> on the road? <laughs> on the road, I know, right? Yeah. I'll be on uh, Pass <laughs> Avenue in about five minutes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Driving home. <laughs> now, I want to thank you for doing the podcast, Pocket Party Podcast, and being on my YouTube channel and just being a great guy, man, with these great stories, these items of interest. That's all I got coming up. I want to thank Bad Ashley for giving us the soundtrack of the podcast. Will you be coming back? Will you come back again? I would love to, man. I'd like to go a little longer next time. <laughs> You're warmed up, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm and, just catching uh, my fifth win. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers on Monday. Yeah. And uh, Check out Earl's podcast. Earl has yeah, a really tell, awesome yeah, tell, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Tell us all about what you want people to... to, 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 to well, if you like cartoons, you could stream the jellies on Adult Swim. Uh, I was uh, on Comedy Central's Roast Battle. Uh, social media, it's just Earl Skakel everywhere. E A R L S K A K E L. And if you like podcasts, uh, I do Inappropriate Earl, which is interviewing, frankly, anyone who could come into my house. Uh, 80s metal guys, uh, hockey players. Uh, I had a porn star on last week, uh, Kate Kennedy. I don't know if uh, you guys know her. Is she, she still active in the business? Oh, yeah. She's like talked about like doing a nine-on-one gangbang like we talk about reading the morning paper. I mean, and for was, a Kennedy, she has a great hole in her head. Yeah. Second, <laughs> hello. <laughs> second best headshot in the family. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so... Uh, yeah, that's, you know, uh, and I'm at the comedy store. But uh, I'm what? supposed to be in Edmonton in July, but who knows where this is going. So Oh, Edmonton. That's where... Uh, that's Wayne where Gretzky. And Edmonton. The, that's where... Uh, that's cool. But like, who knows? If yeah. Road gigs uh, in July. Patrick or, Andrews is from em- uh, Edmonton, uh, Alberta. Yeah, that's where Canada. I'll be. So, Patrick, go see uh, Earl when he's in town. But who knows? So, like... Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, we have a show in, like, June or July, but it's in Florida, so I think it might might actually be on. <laughs> I mean, Florida, Florida, like... Yeah. Right. They, they, they'll definitely be the first. Well, yeah, have a fucking concert here. Uh, but, you know... 
Wow. Well, thanks, thanks, uh, Darren. Thanks for everybody. Thanks, uh, Red Thank Band, you. for your expertise. Thank you, uh, Big Earl. Thank, Thank you, you. Uh, Bad Ashley. Happy Mother's Day to everybody, and happy Cinco de Mayo to all my Mexican friends and countrymen. And uh, keep up the good work. Stay healthy, and this will be over soon. Adios. Yeah.